Rally X is presented by Cooper Tires, Allsbergs, Emstad, and Salentina Embalage Hantering. Round 7 starts in 3, 2, 1. Seven of Rally X 2023. My name is Andrew Coley. This is Hal Ridge. Hello, mate. He's got his shorts on. That was a good decision today. I'm in a t-shirt because the sun is shining. There is a, it's not rain forecast for today. The dog is still here, by the way. It's still up on the tank. We're going to see the dog later on. If you missed yesterday, it was International Dog Day and bike was pretty much the star of the show and the YouTube comments. We did have some brilliant racing as well. We went Q2 through to Q4 and Hal, it was a roller coaster of weather. Yeah, the weather played a massive part, didn't it? This track uh, up here in uh, the Norwegian Forest, Grenland, is uh, a return for Rally X this weekend. There's been some fantastic action, and the weather just really mixed things up. It was dryish, then greasy, then wet, and we ended in pretty dark and wet conditions yeah. at the end, didn't we? And yeah. Uh, yeah, a real challenge for the drivers. It was absolutely pouring with rain, but yeah, great. Saw them going through all those different things. Today, of course, we just got semi-finals and finals. Remember, round seven and eight, they have to count their scores, and these will be dropping scores from... Hello, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> OC baby. Right, hold on. Here we are. Have a headset, mate. Uh, you look like you've been doing your shopping. Uh, what's? Uh, <laughs> are you should? Are you not? I I heard you were talking about candy yesterday. Yes, we were. So I bought some Norwegian candy. Okay. I thought that you wanna might want to try some mm, of that. This is always, oh, this always risky, makes me it? nervous. <laughs> yeah, the last time this happened, we ended up eating surströming, which is <laughs> there's nothing horrible in there. So I think we're gonna tr start with some proper. Um, Classic Norwegian. Okay. What are these? This is like um, uh, you call like a chewing man, or like it's, it's like um, Jelly chew, baby? chew, yeah. But it's uh, yeah. But the, the directly translated is like um, it's a bit chewy, you know. Okay. <laughs> so it's like a chewy man or something. A chewy, a chewy man. <laughs> so Sounds we lovely. call it in Norwegian. We call it uh, Sigman. Sigman. Yeah. Okay. And well. and of course, Sig ladies. Ah, oh, <laughs> of course, equal opportunity sweets. Yeah. 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 Okay, so how are you first? Which color? Mm, the red is quite nice. Yeah, red's always my favorite. If you get jelly sweets, that's what I look. Okay, I'm going to dig in for a red. I think I've got a man. Do you get a man or a woman? No, they're headless. No, a woman. A woman. <laughs> oh. That's all right. I uh, know. Oh just we do know there are going to be people at home who hate this because I know particularly. Oh, how one this as well. is my worst feature. How of all absolutely time. hates it if you eat on the phone. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, I think we're going to move over to... Um, I really like... Do, hang on, we've got to score it. Oh, yeah. I like it. I'm giving that a four. Out of what? Five. Out of what? Five. Four out of five. Yeah, fair. Hmm? I really like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. We tried to find some Haribo on the way in and we couldn't. We ended up with something horrible and those are much nicer. Next right. one. This is one of the most famous um, because this is always what all the Norwegians bring when they're going climbing in the mountains, you know, okay. or going or go, go skiing or something something like that. Quick, quick lunch? Is that so this is like quick, quick, quick lunch? Quick lunch, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Quick lunch. It's like a Kit Kat, isn't it? Do you know what a Kit Kat is? Red yeah, 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 yeah. Same sort of thing. It's a bit same. So it's chocolate with some... Um, so I guess we... Just have a little... Take do a little, little bit like that. Take one. Al. Thank you, mate. Thanks, mate. Let's have a little, have a little wash on that. So that's a quick lunch. Nicer than a Kit Kat, isn't it? Controversial. Yeah. 
Oh, that you is tell who the athlete I is like here, it. isn't it? Because he's not yeah, eating Yeah, no, no, he's not eating like, any of it. Rom, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> we'll be eating this through the whole show. Um, Let us know in the comments if this is your worst feature ever seeing people eat with a microphone in front of that. Look how much Hal hates it. He <laughs> hates the noise. If ever he calls you, if you need to get rid of him, start eating on the phone. <laughs> he, he'll go straight away. He can't see. He's like, shut up, you cretin. I hate it. He really makes him cross. It's brilliant. <laughs> but we need a score. What do you think? Three for me. Mm, three and a half. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think since we're on the chocolate uh, theme, I think we should go on to the. Um, this is like the normal milk chocolate. What we have? Milk. 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 Chocolate. Milk. Milk. Chocolate. Yeah. Milk. Milk. Chocolate. Milk. Chocolate. I think this one. This one is really nice. I think I've had this one before. Is this delicious? Sorry. Is it delicious? This one. Yeah, it's nice. Here. <laughs> Hmm, I have a bird. I'll have one as well. Oh, oh see. You, you savage. <laughs> <laughs> nice, but not the most inspiring thing ever, is it? No, but, it but it's a nice milk. Li nice, okay, chocolate. Okay, I like chocolate. it. Yeah, yeah. No? I like it. Yeah, four and a half. Ooh. Wow. Mm. Good. Yeah. I, I, like, I, just I like a nice plain chocolate. It's good. But milk chocolate. Come on. No, it's just a bit boring, isn't it? It's yeah, just a bit how, vanilla. He's, got, he's not going to be welcome in Norway again, is he? <laughs> All your sweets suck. Uh, <laughs> four for the chewy men and women. How many things have you got left in here? It's just scaring me. We have, uh, yeah, some more left. I think this one we, we need to try. This is... Um, I think a little bit sick. So am I. <laughs> I've only just, just had lunch. <laughs> this is uh, Bumps and Mumps. Bumps. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. <laughs> Bumps and Mumps. <laughs> Bumps and Mumps. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a, <laughs> it's like a bum says like a teddy, you know. Oh, okay. okay, I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is like, but mums is like I don't know. It's like uh, bears, mums. No, no. It's like, like it's mom, like just like just mother. like a. It's, you understand when I open up? Okay. How the it's how oh the how the it's huge. I'll, I'll touch it. Down. Ah, uh, is it like a? I bet it's like a honeycomb thing in the middle. Inside is like this white uh, thing. Let me try. Hold on. I'm gonna bite the head off this. It's like a marshmallow type. Mm. Yes. Yes. That's see. That's more interesting than just milk chocolate. I mean, there's a time and a place for milk chocolate, but this is. Mm. Hi, Norway. <laughs> This you didn't like. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I mean, I'm gonna let, I, I, you like it. Mm. Hal's redeeming himself at the border. <laughs> um, uh, two and a half. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, I know. No, it's not terrible. But you liked it, Hal. Mm. I just wouldn't have more than... I don't even, well, yeah. I'll finish that later. <laughs> 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 it's not terrible. Honestly, it's, it's nice, but it's not for me. Um, score? Three and a half or so. Three and a half, okay. Okay. Okay, I think we're going to go over to a bit more, um, not so much chocolate. We go over to oh, no. salty uh, salty stuff. This is uh, salt seal. Is that salt licorice? Yep. Oh, mate. It's nearly I as, hate it's licorice. nearly as bad as salt. Salt, you, I guess you understand. Uh, seal is like the, the, the fish. Okay. It's a type of fish. So salty fish. Yeah. The, what are They're very interesting <laughs> names, aren't they? they are, in yeah, in the cool. UK, we just have like chocolate, jelly babies. Yeah, whatever. Mm. Mm. I don't like fish either, to be honest. Oh, I hope it doesn't taste fish. I'd rather it tasted of fish than licorice. Here we go. You going for it, Hal? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> one. Uh, one. <laughs> It's better than sewer streaming, but uh, it's not even a one. What's the point? Oh, sewer streaming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. There's a, lot, there's a lot of YouTube videos, including one with us in it. Sewer streaming is not candy. It's, <laughs> it's the worst, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm going to... Excuse me a moment. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't, but I can't just follow it. <laughs> How to take over. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, it's killed over. And mine got stuck in the teeth. It's it's a, it's a it's a no from me, definitely. It, I think it's it one. No, point five. Oh, yes, under one for me. Yeah, I don't like licorice one. and salt. 
is for, salt is for crisps. Okay. Is this the last one? Uh, we have two more. Okay. We better better get on with it. It's not going to be long. Yep. Not be long before you need to be in the car. That's true. Okay. No we I can we can have this as the last one. The the, the no, last I want, one. Well, I want to try the last one. As okay. Well. Okay. Uh, now I took it. But this is like. Um, well, you can smell them. Sure fötter. Sure mm. It's like uh, sour feet. Sour feet. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> who? Co- it's basically <laughs> it, it's a, <laughs> it's a fizzy, it's fizzy cola bottles. You know that everybody has. It's like a cola. Are they are they really called sour feet? Yep. Sura is, is, uh, is sour. And it is a foot. I can't put that in my mouth. I'm going to try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come I on, it's not bad. I need it's something to it with taste, this taste of that. Tastes like uh, cola. I wouldn't put your foot in my mouth. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Oh. Mm. That's not bad. Mm. Four. <laughs> They're okay, yeah. Three. You're not a fan of the Three. sours? They're not... Uh, uh, Chewy man, no, or chewy woman. So who's leading then? Is that the chocolate or no? It's the yeah, it's the yeah. Chew- I gave that man. four and a half. It's a bit strong, and I take that okay. back. I think yeah. the chewy. So man will lead. they are on the top. It's nice chocolate. I mean, yeah, it's just what's this? Oh uh, dear. Last one. This is uh, knatter. Knatter. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean? Unicorn balls or something? <laughs> To be honest, I, I don't really know. It's like small knot. It's like uh, small pieces or something okay. like that. Okay. If you it's don't like know, with the uh, with the um, with the um, blueberry and um, uh, something else. Something else. <laughs> oh, try. One of each or knot? Yeah, but maybe one of each. Yeah, go on. Re- it's red and. Uh, Do you like these? He's uh, not, not, not really answered there. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit non-committed. Uh, no, it's not my. It's not my favourite. We'll have a try. It's a bit boring. It's hard work. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking that. There's a lot of effort for not really any gain. Hold on. But also not terrible. In the middle. Mm. Okay. So this is the winner. That's the winner. Simon and Damir, ladies. This I, I may have just snuck another sweet out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of awkwardly in my hand. <laughs> you didn't like these ones, did you? They're down there. So basically, right, okay, here we go. Yeah, that's <laughs> that is. These are the worst. The salt fish. The, the, I'm ever so sorry, Norway, but this is this is not a nice thing. No. But OC, mate, thank you so much for bringing in a. We needed a bit of culture. I hope you liked uh, at least some of it. I did. We love we love these. These are the, these are the winner, definitely. This is roughly in order, I think. Yeah, and to be fair, I don't think there's there's. A, for, on the base of this, there is no bad Norwegian chocolate, but unless you like salty licorice, yeah, I mean, that's just weird. Um, we better go Sorry. racing, I think. Yeah, mate, yeah, thanks so go. much for bringing that in. Yeah, you need <laughs> no to go problem. and get in the car. <laughs> Jeez, Are you, I mean, just giving you a sticky hand there. Um, <laughs> if, if, you, if you missed yesterday, this is what happened. Take a look at this. Side Enland going to be inside too. Casper Janssen holds on. Enland up the inside now. Anderson goes back past Janssen. Goes up deep. He might give up a place into Enland if he's not careful. Going to try for the exit run. Oh, he's inside again. Casper Janssen makes a brilliant pass. Back on Anderson. Drops a wheel over the outside but takes the win. Casper Haug on the outside though. Amazing start by Simon Olofsson. He's done. He's going to destroy the time. Simon Olofsson goes some three seconds quicker. Done a bit off the line. Good start on the inside for Olofsson. Ends. Lights on the brakes. Going to come under a bit of pressure. Everybody crossed up. Edmund through the gravel trap. On the outside line. Oskarsson gets inside him. So Anderson still down in P5. Inside line then for Steinsel gets through. Oskarsson goes through as well. Edmund too. I'll tell you what, the lights are putting on the best show here. This is absolutely fantastic racing. The series is so good. Brilliant. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. He's got to hang it around the outside and go for the whole shot. And he does as the pack behind him has a fair bit of carnage. Backs it into the second corner. You see, this is why we get on so well. How Rick is throwing up in the corner of the corridor. OK, here we go then. Olofsson on the inside line. But next to him is Casper Janssen who gets a better start. So it's just about alongside. Is Tornholt going to give that up? I think so. So, and oh, and Olofsson's dropped it out of the first corner. Oh, no, don't pull out in front there. Olofsson oh. spins the car around. Almost gets collected. Oskarsson ends up off the run. Maybe. Kevin Eriksson, Oliver Eriksson. Kevin with the best of the starts. But Christopherson recovers and gaps massive. 
was huge. On the first half, they were so close. Chris Dobson has absolutely destroyed them here. Till up on the inside, doesn't matter though. Brilliant start, Mervyn on the outside. Take a bit of getting used to him to learn. And yesterday, absolutely. Yeah, all drivers say that before they get. Oh, he has a little look up the inside of Belevsky. Belevsky's got a problem as he just run deep. Nice job by Evshen. Is it going to be quicker? Almost four tenths off the line. Lincoln ranks with a good start, but then gets eaten up on the run to the first corner. Oh, sideways in the RX2 empty. It is just off the line. Look, he's alongside. Oh, problem. Contact. Something broke, I reckon, there on Oman's car track. There he is. He's hit the wall, I think, has he? How? Oh, look at the. Here comes the launch. Oliver Erickson on the outside with a great launch with Chris Thompson. Equals it. Oliver in contact between Erickson. Goes right the way around the outside. Late on the race on the inside of Emshin. They're both sideways over the curbs. Emshin goes round. Here, I'm guessing we don't go and see uh, Hans Joran too often. Chris Thompson takes it. 14.6. So many Jens Vahl and Oliver Christian Baby. Terrible start to Kevin. Comes out through over the crest. They're both close to the curb on the inside. Not going to be able to pass, but he does come from P4 to P2, and it's about how close they can get to that time of Johan Christoph. Sure, they're going to get it. Mike. 2.15.9. 1.3 behind here in Norway. Oh, baby's gone backwards. So is Tam. Brilliant start by Christoph. So a bit of transition. Don't forget as well, oh. baby coming in in the background. Does slot in just behind Belevsky. So it was close. Three and a half, four ish between him. He can do. Gives him a little push on the exit. Belevsky crosses the line for second place. But Christoph takes it 2.25 for Bale and Ostrich. Kevin with the best start out of Oliver. Oliver's going aggressive on the brakes, gets up the inside of Kevin. They collected each other in Kubler. Ostrin comes all the way through to take the lead. Eriksson crosses the line for P2. Oh, and Oli Eriksson gets past Ostrin in the final corner. Oman on the inside gets a reasonable start. Longer in every little bit. Oh, and Oman with another huge moment across the dirt, over the gravel on the inside, gets on the handbrake. No, I don't think much advantage game there. Here we are, Norway, Grenland, an overhead look at this brilliant track. How rich? Yeah, fantastic venue, isn't it? Proper old school rallycross track through the first corner. We're going to see some huge commitment in the semi finals now. It's a bit drier than it was all of yesterday through that difficult turn two. It's almost a double apex, and then down this long straight to the Joker split where we are at the moment. That corner on the inside of the Joker, the standard lap, is so banked. You can carry a lot of momentum in, use the rotation of the car to carry the speed. Fantastic circuit, super technical towards the end of the lap. The winning suite uh, on the desk there. It's, it's not an advert. Well, we, are, we are open to financial offers for anything, really, because nobody seems to mind what we do. So uh, if you want if you want to pay me and how well, we could wear stuff, I mean, we can no, I, don't, I couldn't eat loads of sweets, though. I'm, oh, I'm really, feeling not, the effect not, you know, of uh, the know. challenge already. We get some sort of sponsorship deal, what do you reckon? I reckon we... Would I you dress up as a chewy man or woman? What's the price? I don't know. You'd have to name it. That'd be part of your deal. I'd be. I could be the green one. Then I'd be. The, I'm not going to wear it. Well, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd actually sod it. Yeah, the right. I'd dress up as a chewy woman for the right money. I don't care. <laughs> in case you, <laughs> in case you hadn't guessed already, there's a 20 minute delay on track. So me and Hal have gone massively off piece within 30 seconds of uh, of coming back from the review of yesterday. Yesterday was mega. You can see from the the highlights footage, it was wet and slippery. It looks all right now. To be fair, I mean there is, there is talk of drizzling a, a, a little bit. bit. Is it really yeah, already? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's going to keep the weather hand out of the window. Yeah. Actually, it's drizzling quite a lot. Yeah, it's stand out in the rain. Cow, come out here. It's a bit much warmer today. It's nice. It's quite chilled out here. Yeah, I've got my shorts on still. That's the limit of the cables. <laughs> I can't go much further than that. Um, Steve Saint and I always wear shorts and I'm always get ripped. Oh, Whoa! No, there's stuff blown away. This is a nightmare. Right, there we go. That's live on air. Thanks, mate. Where was it where we had the terrible wind? Finland. Well, the terrible wind oh, yeah, was yeah. on Friday in the car. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, it was it was um, Denmark. No, Finland. Kovala, when you were running around the like you were literally oh, yeah, 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 going Kovala, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. Uh, YouTube comments are on, are they? I love surströming. Uh, my boss did not believe me and dared me to eat it. I got it to work the day after, and now all types of fish are banned in the lunchroom. <laughs> surströming is the worst thing in the whole world. So Google it. It's uh, it's that they've spelt it. So we're, I'm going to spell it for you. S U R S T O with the little dots over it. You don't need to worry about that on Google. Double M I M G surströming, and it comes in a tin. And people often have to eat it as like the result of a of a dare or a bet or whatever. Uh, and two years ago, I want to say. 
was it Ar was it Arvika? Arvika? We didn't go to Arvika was last was year. Yeah. It anyway, yeah. Twenty one. They made it see. It was the year you won one and did the. Day. Yeah, we just we knew what was coming. We knew because we'd not done it before. And, and all the Swedes are laughing. Yeah, ha ah, ha ha! So funny you're eating sushi. And then our director was like, "What are you talking about? Don't be a wuss. It's so easy to eat." And in the final show of the year, uh, we showed the footage from him chucking up over the Armco barrier, basically after he'd eaten it. How should we zip up the side of the shelter? Yeah, like give me a second. going to blow away. I'm just going to howl. Hey, there it is. Bike the dog. Uh, I'll put an explanation about bike on Instagram. Oh, look at this. Bless him. He's going to get biked down the ladder. Oh, he's just the cutest. There, there you go. Look, bike going down the ladder. Bike is deaf. Um, and he, that the guy uh, who owns bike uses hand signals. So he pats his thigh and the dog will come running over. Um, and yeah, he's just bikes mega basically there he is having a little runabout awesome sorry hands up because it's super bright in here he's actually hosing it down how like properly hosing but it for down. anyone that isn't from the south of england that means it's raining yeah that's yeah Ooh. yeah it's raining cats and dogs sometimes i think that behind us it looks like a green screen i was watching the when, you know like when you look the trucks and stuff i think it's because the contrast is massive if yeah, you could, could see be. how bright these lights are it's, it's well you probably can because we're, like we're frowning the entire time let me try and relax this is what it's like when they say, do you want to do this piece to camera just here? Yes! Throwback to hell, wearing a chair that when you've got nothing else left, you've got nothing left, you have to wear the chair. I'm sure you remember it. We were hiding under trucks. It, that, it did hose it down that day, didn't it? Just Not prior to the semi finals Yeah, I missed that. Where? There was fl floods, weren't there? There were floods. Yeah, but I can't decide if my favourite part was Andreas Eriksson arriving in the studio with, en with no shoes and socks on. Because he had, had to, to wade across, across the wade there. steps. Or David Addison, the uh, commentator that filled in for you. Yeah. Who, who'd parked in the middle of the speedway track and on Sunday evening was desperate to get to his, uh, his oh, flight, which flight. incidentally was cancelled. And he was. had to stay at the airport all night. But his car was just parked in the middle of a lake. So he had to take his shoes and socks off and like, wade to the car. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. What people do to uh, produce live Rallycross TV. Dude's got a lollipop. He's living the dream. Uh, uh, to be fair, there are loads more fans here today. I think because this morning, the weather here in Norway was absolutely lovely. It was a Andrew, really I think I'm going to go to the paddock. You fixed the camera? I haven't, no. But I believe the, the man's amazing the engineers have. Give me a second. Nice one. You have a lovely time. I'll stay here. I'm just going to get my paperwork in order. You don't have a what? Coat. Where's your coat? Stuff's blown away, whatever that is. Hal's going to get a coat. Right. The rain's actually coming in the back of the commentary box now because of the wind. So uh, Peter Hellman, who is in charge of everything in the whole of... Ra yeah, go for it, mate. You need to get your coat. Hal's going to get his coat. And the rain is actually pouring into the back of commentary. The Norwegian Championship is just finishing up its last couple of races. Can't hear you. We're just checking if we can hear Hal. Hal, talk to me. Have you unlocked the car yet or not? No, I, I can hear you now, though, so off you go. Okay. Take, right. take the camera with you if you want. Might as well go behind oh, the yeah. scenes. I could really annoy Hal here because I could just not unlock the car and he'd be stood out in the rain. Desperately trying to get to his jacket. Wait for it. Can you hear me, Hal, or not? I can, yeah. It's you, not even my jacket, is it? No, it's not. Are you out the car yet? Nearly. Now I am. Are you? Oh, it's open. Result. Oh, no! Hang on, where's the coat? That means I forgot to lock it earlier. Oh, man, I was going to really annoy you. It's in the boot. Missed opportunity. Uh -huh. Missed opportunity. Hang on, I need to put the mic down. Oh. Live TV. There are those people looking in their little tents. Those were the sort of dome tents we saw yesterday, which are amazing because it's like a, well, it's like a little cocoon all for yourself, just on your own, spectating. Right, um, mate, can you still hear me? Yeah, hang on, I can, where, yes. Where are we going? Wherever you like, mate. There's, um, at the minute, we're looking at a variety of people sitting in tents and wearing chairs, to be honest, Hal. I mean, you know, like you, they haven't got a jacket. Unfortunately, I, they've, they've not. I have a jacket, though. Okay, I've just locked the car. Is that all right? Yes. Cool. Right, go on, off you pop, then. Where are you going to go? Here we are. Here comes Hal. Come to the commentary box quickly. Here he is. Off you go. He loves that coat. He made me take a picture of him wearing that coat yesterday. He wants to buy. He's laughing. You he can hear me. He wants to buy a coat that's quite like it. There goes Hal. Hal, you're in vision, by the way. So look Hello. cool. Yeah, that's it. that. That wasn't cool. <laughs> I've been working with you for years now. I try so hard, Hal. You know. I'm not cool. We know this. Well, I don't, I don't think I'm particularly, it. but it's yeah. Like and subscribe. I'm just gonna drink some water. Hello, mate. Can you, Hal? Can you feel for a minute? I'm just having a little drink. Carry on. Yeah, no problem. Now we're passing where we got lunch from yesterday. Side by sides. I believe that's Hedda Hozaz's uh, side-by-side car on display this Mega. weekend. Mega. 
Where are you going? You're gonna, where are you going to go to? I'm going to the paddock. You know, it's a long way to... Uh, where, well, who are you looking for? Come on, give to it a running commentary. Tipperary. So I'm Might passing well some be. Norwegian cars at the moment. Uh, I think I've gone the wrong way, to be honest. I'm not going to walk backwards and look at the camera because I'll fall over and yeah. I haven't got the stamina for that either. Be amazing TV, please do. Right. Go on. No one there. Next, one of the, there's a gap between some of these trucks. I need to just find it. How? So, about last night, we went to O'Leary's because uh, we, were, we were hungry and it was the only place that was open. And uh, we ran into yourself, hey, mate. our Estonian friends, didn't we? From Pace Motorsport. And we, uh, we played what's the, what, a shuffleboard, which Hal Ridge is really good at. And then we went bowling. And Hal is also fr annoyingly good at that. Um, whereas I wasn't very good at either, to be honest. So I normally have a window. So if you ever want to play me at darts or pool, I'm really good between two pints and four pints. Uh, but prior to two and after four, it all goes a bit wrong. Uh, yesterday, it, it was I was just terrible the whole time. To be honest, didn't really make any difference what I did. Hal scored four points on the the old shuffleboard a few times. It's very difficult. The, the best thing is I still don't understand it, mate. To be honest. Well, I ended up in the gravel trap a lot, which is what we called it at the end. If you don't know what shuffleboard is, this is going to be a frustrating part of the show for you. It's, it's un, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, isn't it? Come back in ten minutes if you don't like what we're doing. Um, oh, oh, Hal. I, I, we have a problem, Hal. The signal's a bit weak. I don't know that the RF's going to go as far up the paddock as oh it dear, needs that, to go. That, that, that's good, isn't it? Is that Hen Henker? Is that as far as it goes? Oh, mate, that's brilliant. Because I'm oh, looking at the monitor over here. Look, Hal keeps disappearing. He's like the scene in Predator where he's in disguise, Hal. He just can't. <laughs> we can't hear you, mate. Walk backwards. Come back five steps. Keep going. Keep going. You're nearly in range. You're slowly getting revealed. There he is. He's out of his predator disguise nearly. So the problem you've got here, Hal, is there's nobody from Rally X at this end of the paddock, is there? <laughs> hey? So if we look backwards and you can see the uh, Norwegian mountains, you can see... Just before the Norwegian OMSE mountains. OMSE is, is up there. Everyone that Hal wants to talk to. OMS is up there. JC's just here. J JC's within five metres of Why don't you being shout? Go on, shout. See if you can get Yol to come and say hello out there. Just shout Yol. Go on. Oh, uh, well, we're, gonna, we're about to see. If we have a look at this guy running here, this is Isaac Rearson of uh, former Rally X fame. Let's follow him. Who is it? Run. Who is Isaac it? Rearson. Go on. Isaac, where are you going, mate? To the car. What's wrong? Uh, the Vipers. Oh, nightmare. <laughs> Standard rallycross issue. So, Moving on. There you are. So, what, so yeah. Isaac Rearson's working for JC Race Technic this weekend. He's rallying now. Previously won the cross car title in. Rally, Rally X Nordic as it was then, and they've got a wiper issue with one of their cars ahead of the semi-finals. <laughs> Mate, nightmare! What, no, what an issue! No wipers on a uh, on a yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. Hal, I've just printed your last grid for you, mate, and put it on your desk now. It's uh, the Supercar Am grid. The printer's under the table here for anybody's interested. I know you're not. Please but, put something heavy on top of it. Uh, I've put that stick mug that I gave you on top. I'm going to read the comments, Hal. Let's have a look and see how terrible everyone thinks it is today. Uh, okay. Uh, the multi-purpose of chair hats. Hello from Austria. Hello, Austria. There was a flood warning nearby in Silda. Yeah, there was a flood warning here yesterday. I uh, uh, can't see because of the lights, if you're wondering. Show us the Norwegian Championship. Big, we can't, I'm afraid. They have a different TV deal, Chris. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Even when you're filling, it's, it's entertaining. Thanks. This is, this is better. <laughs> can you still hear me, mate? Yeah, yeah I can, yeah. I've got, I've, got, I've got someone. Finally, I've got someone. There's also, there's some bit, yeah, there we go. Just going down slightly further. Hal has turned into a digital ghost. Yeah, he pretty much was. Going down, uh, pixelated Hal No, This is brilliant television. Do you, think, well, do you think I might win a BAFTA, Hal, for this kind no, of... Absolutely not, no. Why not? I'm sure I should be nominated by now for some sort of an award, I would have thought. Shall huh? we do an interview instead? Who with? Alexander Vahl. Yes. And it's boiling hot now. The sun's come out, and I'm sweating like mad in my coat. What a mistake, Alex. Hello, mate. You're uh, you're here with Jens, your your cousin. How, how's it going? Amazing supercar debut so far. Yeah, he surprised me. Uh, it's his first time in a supercar, so uh, really happy about his performance. And uh, he does it step by step with good control, so couldn't be happier. It was a bit of a surprise, wasn't it, at the test here? He came to drive his uh, speed car, and uh, then you turned up. You've been working with him in the European Championship this year, and. Uh, Joel said uh, the guy that had supposed to test the, the Audi wasn't here and he got a few laps. And, uh, yeah, I, I know 
from my own experience, once you've driven a supercar, it's game over, really. Nothing quite comes close, does it? Uh, yeah, we had a prank on him. He said uh, Bakri was supposed to drive the Audi here, and Yul was uh, here for, because of that. And then uh, Yul came um, uh, by, um, to Jens and said, uh, his driver is not here. You want to have a go? He jumped in and got the feel for it uh, immediately. Drove pretty, uh, pretty good, good control. Nothing uh, big to it, and uh, it's driving two classes here this weekend, so he's jumping between supercar and the Super 1600. And uh, after his go in the supercar, he said when he came out of the Peugeot Super 1600, the straights feel so long now. The straight feels so long, he said. <laughs> so. And for you, obviously, you have loads of supercar experience. I know all of us want to drive all the time. How is it for you to be uh, working on the sidelines together with someone you're very close to? Yeah, it's uh, fantastic. I, uh, I get my dose of rally uh, through him and uh, to be able to share the experience I got from many years in the category and also in the championship, it's uh, fantastic. And uh, these young guys uh, take it so quick, so couldn't be happier. Thank you, Alex. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Great to hear from Alexander Vahl, who was uh, World Rx regular back in the day. Uh, I've got... Great stories from him on Happy Street. He came down Happy Street. I can't tell it how on air, unfortunately. We came down Happy Street and he says, I have just sit down here. And he said what he'd seen. And it was very, very funny. It's one for the book, which Hal's going to help me write at some point. He's written a couple of books, Hal has. Uh, good morning from Texas. Ryan, good to have you with us, mate. Uh, Sun out. Hello from England. That's Stephen. Phil, yes, I did like your dog yesterday, which was good. Uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, Scuff TV production is the best. You get to see real people instead of professionals. How dare you? We <laughs> that is not fair. <laughs> I quite like it. Look, honestly, honestly, I really hope that should you ever meet me and Hal in real life, you'll, you'll generally um, think that we're pretty similar than we are on television. My worst thing is I do swear a bit too much in real life. My mum always tells me off for it. Um, and then you have to put the filter on when you go on air. So, yeah, one day I'm going to mess it up. And I'm, how do you look ever so lost? Where are you going? Well, I'm just counting the amount of Norwegian races there are to go, and there's oh. a few. Let's oh, just have a look really. at the pre-grid. This that, is what we were talking about before. Down the front? So this is the Norwegian Championship. We'll just have a quick look at how uphill the, the pre-launch area is. See these uh, touring cars that are launching at the moment? We yeah, can't go, actually go film the it. racing. Well, go to, go to, the, go to the pre -grid. closer. Go Come to the there. launch. Yeah, right. there. Go there. We're not actually allowed to film these uh, on track because it's not our TV deal, but it's, a re it's really, really uphill. You can't really see how uphill it is from this angle, but that isn't representative of the level of the start line at all. So let's go back and have a look at some Rally X cars. Well, this, uh, this car's being turned away. Um, Hal, I bet you're really hot in that jacket now, aren't I'm, you? I'm really sweating. Look how sunny it is. I've had to take my glasses off because they were it's missing It's so up. sunny. Someone get me a pina colada in a hot tub. This is a, this, I'm having a great day now. And seeing you out there sweating in that rubber coat is pretty funny. <laughs> 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 Thank you for the kind comments. Someone said that I am professional, Hal. They haven't said anything about you. Um, <laughs> I know Let's I'm only messing, at, um, I know what you mean. Do you know what, me and Hal actually really, one of the reasons we really enjoy this production, and we're lucky to work on a number of different series, as you well know. The nice thing about Rally X is with it being a stream, it's a, it's a bit looser. You know, when you're on the telly, you're very much con uh, constrained by the amount of hours you've got on the satellite, hitting a TV window. Uh, there are some broadcasters where you literally you can you can't talk about certain sponsors, certain things. I think at home sometimes we're like, oh, why is this happening? Like the Norway thing. Yeah, we'd love to show you some of the Norwegian Championship, but it's a different TV deal. Commercially, people pay. You know, running a TV production costs tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of euros sometimes. So it's all about the deals that are done in the background. Rally X is, is good fun because we have a bit more freedom to do what we want. Like sending Howell walking around a paddock where he clearly has nobody to talk to. Well, the problem is, all of these, well, these are all Norwegian Championship competitors anyway, and I can't make it to the Rally X part of the paddock. I know. We have, we flagged it, haven't we, Hal, for next weekend? What have we requested for next weekend? Then we can complain to on air if lunch. it doesn't get done. To be near lunch. <laughs> We've asked to put the, uh, the Rally X competitors a bit near. The paddock here, they've actually extended like the paddock. This is like time walk. Here's Alexander Vahl again. Hello, mate. <laughs> do you want to have a, do another interview with him, Hal? Yeah. I mean, yeah, news. treading water a bit. I'm just going through the comments again. Hold on. We're going to steal a supercar and go for a drive, Cody. Yeah, I'm up for that. Let's go. Let's go. Hello from Poland. Yeah, you guys can cover nothing for two hours. This is great. Where can we get Hal's book, Andrew? So, actually, uh, that's Hold a Flat. Hal, where can I get the book, mate? Uh, which one? Oh, so cocky. 
<laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 I'm messing, no, no. I'm messing. Somebody, somebody came up to him yesterday and said, is your book here? He's like, which one? He's back, he's back, look. He's coming back, he's back in the room. He's just about to appear behind me. There he is. Um, Hello. Which one? Uh, you put in, the, put in the comments which one. I'm assuming the OMSE book. So Hal's written on, uh, two books. He's written one on Kenneth Hansen uh, and his amazing career in Rallycross, and he's written another. Hal, go and stand on the podium for me, please. Top step. So I can um, feel like a winner. Yeah. Uh, can we get a nice wide shot of the podium, please? Is the champagne there no, yet? We can I wouldn't. It. There is loads of champagne. Should we have a look at the champagne? No, first? just spray some. Go on. Just have a, have a go. Oh, but I saw Maria. It's right outside the commentary box. Hand us a bottle in. Give us, so just give, us, give, us, give us a trophy, Hal. Cross car junior third. I'm reaching, I think that I'm reaching around the corner. I'm waving at you. Give us a trophy. Hmm. Let me see what you might win. No, I don't, I don't, don't give me some P3 in some support category. I want a good trophy. What's that one? Here it is. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to give you a trophy, is he? Uh, There's a trophy. Oh, thanks, mate. Hold on. I'm coming for it. There we go. These are really nice. So they're like, I don't know how I can see out there. Do you see? It's like milled, machined. What are those bolts in the, What are the bolts in the bottom, How? What size are they? M6. That's what I thought. Uh, I wish there was a spare bottle of champagne here, because I would There's definitely only two, come and spray you. There's only two bolts in this. I'm they were lightweight, aren't they? They don't need they don't need three bolts. Yeah, that's true. It's very nice though, look, and then there's a little plaque on here with, with where we are. So this one is for round seven Grenland. That is for open two wheel drive third. Somebody's gonna win that because I think we've only got three cars left. How that's what I gave it can to I you. give you that trophy back, please? There you go, mate. It's around the end of the tent there. There you go. You got it? Thanks, mate. Ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> he loves, loves a physical prank. Um, you can come back in if you want, mate. You might as well. So the yeah, book, right. sorry, yeah. Where, how, in all seriousness, where can they get the book? So if you're at an event, should you be at Hollius next weekend, you'll be able to buy the book directly from OMSC. They have it in the parts stores. So you can go in and buy yourself an FC1 if you've got half a million euros, uh, or you can go and buy yourself a, a book uh, from uh, from OMSC's store. Do you want it? Which isn't half a million euros. No, it's not. Yeah, how much is it? Uh, I don't know what. No, neither do I. Uh, and the Hanson book, can I still get the Kenneth book or not? Yes, that's yeah? through rallycrossworld.com. Rallycrossworld.com for the Kenneth Hanson book. And uh, yes, yeah, so can you get the? Can you get this book? Actually, there it is. Mind your laptop. Can you get this book online or not? Yes. Yeah, where? Yeah, through OMSE. OMSE.se, I think. OMSE. If I, people message me directly, I can send them the link. Engineer to win. I mean, sometimes replies. If he's a bit busy. Well, that's only you. It'll take a while. Yeah, I've noticed that. Priorities. Wow, okay, I'm what we got? So sweaty. Uh, long live rally crest. Uh, Hal Ridge and Andrew Coley. Good, good, great combo. Good job. Thank you. Uh, what else have we got down the bottom? Is Tiger's car working? Yes. Saw him roll out this morning's practice. Excuse well, me. slow down on the I'll comments. I'll go to Andrew Ericsson and suss a supercar for Andrew. If I'm going to suss a supercar, it's for me. Is Hal's, <laughs> is Hal's jacket rubber or latex? I don't know. He really likes it, though. He's definitely going to get one. Oof. Did you get to see the massive crash in Norwegian? Yes, I did. And thankfully, the driver was okay. There was a really big crash in the junior category of, uh, of Norwegian yesterday. What else? Uh, what a way to spend a Sunday. Uh, and unlike these two, we get to have beers. Well, we might have a beer later. I think the odds are... Fairly low actually tonight, uh, but we'll see. I'm going to have airport. a long drink. Oh, you finished long celebration. Drink. There's uh, one can. Okay, where are we going? Is there a stream for Norway? Nordic streams are on point. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Love you guys and the people that come by. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Uh, we go just going a bit further down. You guys are trouble. Bit of rallycross geekery. Hold a flat. All of these books are a bit of rallycross. Love a bit of rallycross geekery. Yeah, fair. They're, but they're brilliant if you if you do love. Right, I'm going to get down to the bottom of these things here. Here we go. Uh, oh, somebody showed me a photo earlier on, by the way, of the um, of the dog on the back of the motorbike, which was awesome. Like he was chilling, in like, he was like uh, almost like a what those like a Honda Goldwing sitting on the back seat. And then apparently there's a thing that goes over the top of him, obviously because he doesn't want to fall off the bike. He doesn't wear uh, leathers and a crash helmet. Uh, Cool. You guys are going so quickly. The comments I can't keep up. Rally That's why like you can't race a supercar. <laughs> yeah, like watching rally cross your mates instead of professional commentators. How dare you? What? No, we, I, I'm only joking. We, I know exactly what you mean. That, but that's genuinely what I want. And this is what it would be like sitting on the sofa with us, except there would be beers and Chris and all the rest of it. Watching from New Zealand. Yeah, wow. We've had someone from Texas as well. Here we go. Uh, shout out to Cuba, Cuba behind the Coley, is it? Not sure. Uh... Audiobook read by you two. That'd be fun. You want to do an audiobook? 
Um, we could do, yeah. Like, reading that one, the old OMSE book would be... Can we hear you read in your re professional reading voice? <coughs> let me find you something to say. Let me find you a... Let me, let's, uh, is the dog back there? Yes, the dog is here. And yeah, sorry guys, that basically what's happened is the Norwegian series is running about 20 minutes late, but they didn't tell us until after we'd gone on air, so there wasn't a lot we could do. Find me a section that yeah, I could yeah, read. Yeah, I don't want to like the stats. Just no, nice. no, no. Find me a good one. Is there a good story in there? Mm. Is there a good story? There's several good stories. Many, many pages. Give me a second. Okay. You wrote it. I mean, I would have assumed that you knew roughly where the stuff was, but... Why is Gronholm not competing here, Hal? Hey? Uh, they don't actually have a car to compete with. There you go. Why? They just don't. So. Uh, for what you put, there's, uh, they, they don't have any... Gronholm doesn't have any hind eyes left. That's a shame, isn't it? It is, what, yeah. Loving it from uh, Hayden Mc, uh, McRodden is from New Zealand. What's your favourite ever memory of Rally X? We said this yesterday, actually, probably the All-Star Magic Weekend. Was that our first ever Rally X? <laughs> this, this is quite a funny one. Was that our first ever Rally What was that, sorry? The All-Star Magic Weekend. It was, yes. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. That was good. Right, hold on to the this comments th for a second. So this is about... Uh, trying to keep up. Fiesta uh, number 10, which is currently in Poland. We don't this is about Oliver Erickson's World RX debut. OK. <coughs> like <laughs> bedtime stories, isn't it? I'll pretend I'm asleep. Oliver Erickson, World RX 2017. The first time when you're on the start grid in the World Championship, it's kind of weird knowing that you're one of them. I had too much respect for the others at the time, being young. Now, of course, I have respect, but it's just someone you need to beat. But then it was, oh, it's Sebastian Loeb. There's a swear word there. I'm not going to say that. We're not that loose. Uh, it's Sebastian Loeb kind of thing. I did two World RX races, and I had a good chance in South Africa to make the semis, but I stranded it literally. That was horrible. I ruined three gears plus reverse on that tyre stack because I was so... And I wanted to get off. Another swear word. Uh, did you pick it because of the swear words? No. Oh, OK. This is quite funny. Yeah. I've heard the comments. See the picture. I went first to reverse, first to second. I tried so much, but I was stuck. And there's a picture there of the car stuck on the tire set. I didn't know he'd done half a gearbox in reverse. That's, <laughs> that's when you get back and your dad says, I'm not very happy with you. Let me find another one. Yeah, find me, find me something else. I like that. It's good. Yes. Well, maybe we should, should we read some books? Right, OK, you can carry on. I didn't know you could read. This is I know. It's, it's, it's groundbreaking, isn't it? Apparently, there's some amateur issues racing in Zandvoort today. F something, I think, F something or other. Not seven, a clue. seven races in the next seven weekends, whatever. We're doing two races in two weekends. No jumps in F1 either. They hit a sausage curb, do a jump, and everyone panics. We look at a sausage curb, and it's, well, we've built massive curbs, and drivers just keep driving over them. Oh, should we hear, hear about Kevin Erickson's around the outside? Oh, yes. No, it's, it's quite long, that one. Well, <laughs> hang on a minute. I just asked Henke how long we've got, the director. Oh, good. There's still there's two more heats down in the pre-grid. This was a wonderful idea. Um, so this is uh, this is legendary. This is uh, chassis number 23, which is now in Ireland. This is Kevin Erickson's around the outside car. We always talk about Kevin Erickson around the outside. This bit here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, this is this is why. Kevin Erickson, World RX 2016. I think the World RX season started a bit too well for me. I was fastest ahead of Matthias Sexton in free practice for the first race in Portugal, and maybe I got overly confident. As a 20-year-old guy, I wanted to beat Petter Solberg, Sebastian Loeb, and Matthias straight away. I felt I had the pace, but when you want something too much, you can push too hard, and then you make mistakes. I'd won a lot before, but that year showed me at the top it's not so easy. The top guys are two levels higher than anything else. Now I've had time to think about it. I'm very happy with the speed then, not just the consistency. During the season, I was always fighting between 8th and 12th in Germany, though. Hello, Molly. <laughs> what a lovely surprise. Hold on, I'm just reading. I know it's a revelation. Um, we, Molly, Molly is here. Go on, Molly. Say it. Right, I'm just going to finish this. Here we go. So <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'll Hi start, everyone. I, I, don't want to, I don't want everyone to miss out. Now we've got halfway through. Uh, during the season, I'll, I'll read faster. Always fighting between 8th and 12th. Germany, though, I had a really good Q4 on his third. Then I had a good run in the semi-final. I was second behind extra and could follow in closely. I lost a bit of ground in the last couple of laps because my first final of the season was on the cards and I started to think about it too much. I love that, that when you hear about the stuff behind. Uh, OK, where am I? Lost my place. <laughs> it's great TV. Okay. My father wasn't too pleased afterwards. He said I was quicker than Matthias at the start. He said, you didn't do well enough in the last laps. He was a little bit frustrated about that. To be fair, Andreas Eriksson backward once won at Estering, and the first thing Eriksson did was told us how he wasn't doing something right. Um, 
Usually starting fourth on the grid at Estering means you're last out of the first corner. So we decided in the pre-grid I would go for it around the outside at turn one. Either it would work or I'd end up in the gravel trap and it wouldn't really matter. My father and I were a little heated again before the final, but he knew what triggered me. Show me you can do it was the last thing he said. <laughs> I was already in the car and I thought, don't worry, I'll show you. Yes, so good. And it worked. When I came out the first corner in the lead, I looked in the mirror and saw Petter's Monster Energy branded bonnet behind and I knew it would be hard. I pushed everything I had and the pace was really good. After the checker flag, winning the race was all I was thinking about. Then we were standing waiting for the podium. Petter said to me, that first corner move was the coolest thing. And then I realized it wasn't something that happened every day. The day after the race, the video for the first corner went viral and everything was a bit crazy. I've done that move before and since. Maybe not in that spectacular way, of course. It wouldn't work every time but it did that time, and it was really nice. Is it Mega. storytelling time? Yeah, it is, <laughs> mate. In case you're, so, Molly, everyone, our lovely hey. peer reporter, we missed you. Oh, I missed you too. I know. I'm, I'm so good to have you here. <laughs> How, what, what are you doing here? You're just here for fun? Yeah, I'm here with the family. So uh, we, were at, we were at home, and that's just an hour and a half away. So, yeah. Thought we'd come down and say hello. Thought we'd come and uh, do something non-motorsport related for once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, don't, there hasn't been any motorsport in the last 25 minutes. So, and, um, Did somebody get you here because you, they, you, you were told that we were feeling frantically for half an hour or uh, I, Peter did come into the KMS tent where I was right now yeah. and, he, and he said to you can you come can you come can you come and I realized oh they, okay, they, they, they need a bit of help. well in all, on, in all honesty Molly you often work as a reporter on this series I tried to fulfill that role put the headset on but the RF wouldn't reach as far as KMS so I made it halfway and then became a it's a huge area it's oh, massive, it was isn't so massive. funny he got halfway down the paddock he's like I'll go get some interviews and off he went and literally all he could get to was Norwegian series Not, I don't think there's one car is there from Rally X that's within range of the RF um, yeah so, so how, are we, how are we liking Grenland? It's amazing. Right. Yeah. What a great track. Wicked, isn't it? Have you ever driven here? I haven't, but I've been here many times. You should have entered the this weekend. Really? In what? Cross car. <laughs> we'd, have, we'd have stuck up for you. Like, whatever you did, even if you fired people <laughs> off in turn one, we'd have gone, it wasn't Molly's fault. <laughs> no. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> Didn't see anything. Yeah. Nothing, nothing happening here. Hey, so <laughs> yeah, nothing to see Thomas here. Holman is, is trying to race in Julius next weekend in cross car. And he did a deal on the, <laughs> on the YouTube comments yesterday that if he doesn't finish in the top three, he'll let me drive his cross car for free in an event. What do you yeah. reckon? Do you reckon he can be in the top three? I uh, reckon so. Do you? Yeah. No, you've got more faith than me. Yeah. I reckon the drive's in the bag. Been far too nice. Far too nice. Right, Hal, the only thing I've missed printing <laughs> is supercars semi-finals. So what's going on? That. You're very delayed then. Yeah. Massively, yeah. Yeah. We went on air. That happens in this sport, doesn't it? Did a, it did a, a sweet... What are these? <laughs> uh, Simon. I know you can speak Norwegian. <laughs> yeah, I know. What are they in English? Uh, jelly men. <laughs> chewy men. O OC called <laughs> them chewy men. <laughs> Do you know what? So, so what's so funny? So Molly is uh, you're Norwegian, aren't you? I'm nationality Norwegian, wise, yes. but Molly's dad is British. So Molly yeah. obviously speaks English with a very English accent. So when we first started Rally Cross, was it 2014? Yeah, you did was, the World yeah. Championship with me and Eric yeah. Farron, wasn't it? Yeah. And the, the <laughs> producer, Steve Saint, that Hal mentioned earlier, goes, oh, yeah, it'd be brilliant. We've got this Norwegian girl. It'd be nice. We'll have like, loads of different accents on air and all, blah, all this. And then Molly turns <laughs> up and goes, hello. Like, they're <laughs> the most English accent ever. It's like, right, OK, there's not an international show. I mean, Eric was still very Swedish, wasn't he? But yeah, you, I mean, you, that's why, if you're wondering why Molly speaks such <laughs> perfect English, it's because basically she's I think they were hoping for something a little like this, right? They were? Yes. Something a little more musical? Yes, a little more uh, Norse <laughs> English. <laughs> no, no one knows Molly's Norwegian until either she asks a Norwegian or Swede a question on the broadcast or a Norwegian is winning. <laughs> and then there's just like two little figures jumping up and down beside the track. But they're, they're not Patrick to, to tall the Norwegians. Hol no. Holman's way worse than yeah. me there. <laughs> right, oh, I'm man. nearly there, Hal. I'm nearly there, right? I think this is the last grid we needed. Where are you going to watch from? Well, actually, the commentary uh, box. Anders and Emily are up there by the, that white tent somewhere. Okay, we went up there to watch uh, some of the racing earlier it's on. Pretty good it? view. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're here apparently. Is yeah. this, are they up yeah, there? yeah, just behind the white tent, I think. But then it started raining, so uh, maybe they had to go and hide. Oh, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's they're up there somewhere. That's where Molly's family are, and that <laughs> is up on the bank, right? Yeah, you've and you've got a great view of the start, so they, they oh, basically amazing. the cars come straight towards so you. So me and me and Hal went up there early and watched the Norwegian final from the top of the where our TV camera is on top of the building at the yeah. top there, which is which is oh yeah, uh, can Brilliant. you see it? No, that's the <laughs> tents, and the building is just slightly further that way. Is it there? No, it's have, not. Have you guys there. been struggling a bit with the pointing this weekend? <laughs> no, we, we've got really good. Have you noticed the pointing? I reckon <laughs> I could do weather now. Don't you? I heard Hal yesterday saying, oh, I'm pointing the right way. <laughs> yeah. <it laughs> yeah. Where were we when the pointing was an issue? A tierp. The OMSC tent was one side and the other one yeah. just couldn't. It's like a 
mirror. An inf- <laughs> like a, like infinity a selfie mirror. camera, isn't it? You do a selfie and you go... Oh, I don't take many selfies. Well, <laughs> so I'm trying to get him to be cool. I mean, we're working on it, you know. Bring me up to speed. How's everything going? Everything's fine, except for the... 30 minute delay. <laughs> the YouTube comments, most people seem to look, oh, look, there's people saying Molly with heart. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? What well, we got? Dog cam is great. Uh, Favourite supercar? Oh, Cal, can you scroll back up a little bit? Not too far, it's a lot. Just go a little bit, a little bit up. Here we go. Uh, what an audio book <laughs> would be with your. Oh, go back up. Let's, let's about, yeah, about the book reading. Where are we? <laughs> Oh my goodness me! People Watching want from more, Latvia, right? further up, mate, even further. Okay, is that it? Okay, that's it. A Gronholm not competing gun in there. Blah blah blah. What's your favourite memory of Rally X? The Gronholm senior beating Gronholm <laughs> junior. I'm excited to see Peter McGarry join, join Derek Towhill in Hollius. Is Peter doing open two wheel drive? Yeah, in the Volvo C30. Yeah, yeah. Wicked. I was just talking to Peter on the no, way we, over we here we about moments in Rally X, and Dog. he was telling me about Tiep. Oh, go on. Uh, Tiep 2019, when we had Oliver Erickson celebrating the title oh, of Rally yeah, yeah, X. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> man, I, I remember. <laughs> that I, was some moment. <laughs> I remember, oh, coming down, here we go. So we got, uh, what else we got? Come down, uh, Peter McGarry, go on further, Hal, let's go. Marcus Graham's not here. Yeah, Marcus isn't here. He'd be great to have him in for a minute. He did come. I I'd pay a lot of money for this commentary yeah, yeah, on the Dutch that. Grand Prix. We'd love to do the Dutch Grand Prix. You know what? This is this would be so much fun. Loiak is just a comment. That's good. I I'm agree. i to turn Molly off because she's chewing. Great. Oh, what is she? oh, yeah, Hal hates that. Uh, watching from the Netherlands. Should you not be watching the Grand Prix? But I love that you are. What's that about an audio book? Can we get an audio book of Andrew Coley reading Hal's book? We probably can. Uh, Bertelsen from Denmark. I love you guys so much. It makes you sad. We don't have a national championship stream in Belgium. Yeah. Do, uh, the what was that? There's so much good rally cars. Someone's cross. just chewed in my ear. I think they're probably in the truck. It's not, not me. I think it was on tour. You back. turned me off. <laughs> so, there we go. Back on again. <laughs> that was horrible. Uh, so keep going. Keep going down. Keep going down. Take my money, someone says. Uh, another dog. Here we've seen lots of dog. Favourite supercar. That wasn't a favorite. What an audio book. Well, I could read some good books, can I? Mm. Favourite supercar that wasn't a Fiesta, e.g. Hanson 28, Lavera's Fiat, the Polo. Favourite supercar... Is that a question? Oh, so favourite supercar light that wasn't a Fiesta. Oh. Uh, Nils, uh, not Nils. Um, Nilsson had a Polo. That's it, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Polo's reference there. OK, dog cam is great. be great if the Nordic and the French Championship came together for some a one-off event. That would be fun. That would. We, see, it's now actually called Rally X rather than Rally X Nordic. So in theory, we'd go anywhere. Where do you want us to come? If you know someone who's got a, a circuit and some sponsors, let's go. We'll come down there. We can all go <laughs> for beers together. Uh, track maintenance crew. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited for the race today, but slightly more excited to watch the track maintenance crew get to work again. <laughs> Something's gone very wrong. Yeah, no, it's just a delay, unfortunately. Look at the Mollies. Look, Mo. Oh. you see? Mollies with hearts. Oh, there's one there. Look, Molly with lots of O's and L's. Very and y's. sweet. I was one there Molly is always smiling. That's not actually true. No, <laughs> absolutely. Someone not. just asked, "Has Anders Grandal ever done rallycross?" Yeah, no, it's Anders Grandal. Yeah. You better explain who that is. Uh, husband. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> like for people, if you're wondering at home. But no, he hasn't. No, but I've, I've actually. He's too scared. We've we've. I've driven this WRC car up at Lingos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you? On the track. <laughs> That's cool. That's not rallycross, though, is it? No, no, no. But he's we were just there. I think he was just testing it, and then I was allowed to. I think he's too scared to spin. do rallycross. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Let him I wonder know. if he's listening to this. <laughs> I, bet, I suspect he's not. Hey, it must be very unusual where he's not doing a rally and you're not working on some event somewhere. And then we're here. And then you came here. <laughs> that is actually the norm. Yeah. Somebody there saying, by the way, awesome book. Thanks for oh, no. signing it for me. Uh, Mole, Hal, and Coley in a cross car next round. That would be good. Yes, fun. let's do that. Uh, what else we got? Probably drive a purge, bloody, 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 blah. <laughs> God, we've done a lot of this this weekend, Molly. It's the a first time we've <laughs> ever had the comments. My goodness me, if we needed them. I've never, f- I don't think I've ever filled this long ever. <laughs> Andreas Backer and Andrew Jordan on the mic for the cross car race. That would actually be, <laughs> those two in commentary would be quite good, wouldn't yeah. they, I think? I don't know if it would be particularly clean. No, I think, it'd be, but it would be, uh, be very funny. There we go. Okay, perfect. Right, so we Who, who are, are you uh, cheering for, Molly? Ooh. Yeah. Am I allowed to... Ch- n- you're not working on it, so I'm you're not impartial. Did we run out of paper? Hmm. Or have I, have I, did I not press print? That's a good question. Who am I rooting for? Not Ule sure. Christian Weeby. Ule Christian Weeby. He just became Norwegian champion. He did yeah, become Norwegian champion. Did champion. I didn't hit print. Yeah. If he wins today, I hope he does the same kind of donut. I love a donut that's part Gee, of the I've got a video of that. Well, are, you, are you allowed to do donuts here? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun's still allowed here. <laughs> 
that's why we're doing uh, what we're doing here. Okay, I'm gonna. Pr I've got. <laughs> I've got Vaby's donut when he won the Norwegian Championship. Here, here it is. Look. Yep. This is this is great. One way, then back the other. Doesn't look. really work as a. Yeah. Oh, nice one. It's mega, isn't it? That is mega. So the mechanics will be like, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, especially not when he's got more racing to do. I'll stick it on <laughs> Instagram now as a story. So who are you cheering for? Who am I cheering for? I don't know. Um, hmm. uh, how are the? Um, How's Jens Vol doing on his debut? Brilliantly. Yeah? Really, really good. Yeah. A bit tricky in the wet yesterday when the grip wasn't the same, but otherwise, very, very good. I guess today he'll be able to have a bit more consistent conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be interesting. And the Ericsons, how are they getting on? Very well. Oh. Kevin's right up there, isn't he, this year? Kevin seems to be having a bit of a resurgence, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, last year obviously broke his leg before the start of Nitro Cross, missed the first couple of rounds. He won last time out, didn't he? Uh, no? No. What, in Nitro Cross or here? Nitro. Nitro. No. Double podium, the weekend. wasn't it? Yeah, who won at the weekend? Pastrana. And, and Larson. Backer across the line first, but hadn't jokered. So, yeah, he was a bit upset about that. Yol was actually. Norwegian. Norwegian. Yol was upset as well about that. Who was that. spotting? Yol. Christopherson, yeah, he was really, he saw him in afterwards and he's like, oh. But Backer was really cool. He came in the studio, yeah. he said, look, it happens. Hmm. You just... You hate it. Mm. To be fair, if he joke, if you look at the time difference on the timing at the end of it, he'd have been P3. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it wasn't like he lost a win because he didn't joke, but he lost a P3 because he didn't joke. But it's still frustrating because mm. third, he ended up fifth, lost a few points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but Kevin's, yeah, he's going really well in Nitro. He's very consistent. He's leading yeah. the standings. He hasn't had a win there. He won last year in Calgary, um, which was kind of a, a show event. But, um, but yeah, he's going really well. It's good to see. You know, after the dis disappointment of last year, must have been absolutely gutted, mm. mustn't he? I think you all know the story. Kevin was injured, unfortunately, in an accident. Um, involving his dad and broke his leg and, and missed, uh, well, a crucial part of the season. And then he became a dad himself. Yes, yeah. And now Oliver got married a couple of weeks ago I as well. So yeah, the oh. Ericsons are loving it. We, we were up there talking to him about everything, weren't we? Booking flights, <laughs> driving trucks. Like, there's, it's a lot running what they run. Um, how's WRC? Good, yeah. We were last in Finland. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty epic event. Oh, mate, I've <laughs> I'd love to go. Never been to that. Been to Rally GP. I've been to Catalonia. Monty. Yeah. Try that might be it for WRC events. Yeah, that no, was That's good one. to see Evans oh, back on top. Corsica, I worked at Corsica. <laughs> yes, we yeah. were there together, yeah, weren't we? we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, no, so next up is Greece, which is one of the toughest events to work on. Uh, just to work on, as well as to drive on, really. Uh, so the service park is in Lamia. Yeah. We, we land in Athens, and it's already a two and a half drive to Lamia. So head up there uh, to the shakedown, and then it's back down to Athens a couple of hours to do stage one, and then it's out to Lotraki, which is uh, uh, towards the west. So you've got just so much driving. You drive, you know, two and a half thousand kilometers or something across only a few amount of wow. days. So nice. it's, it's just relentless. Uh, early mornings, late nights. We look at the smile on your face. So you <laughs> love it. That's the thing. She's like trying to pack your picture. It, it is hard. I think <laughs> if, you, if, if at home you think TV is easy, it's not. But we also love it, and I think you can appreciate that, and we appreciate the, the comments from you guys appreciating us loving it. We, we all love the sport, don't we? I think that's the thing. Yeah, that's what keeps you going, isn't yeah, it? That's what fuels it. And the people, 100%. too. Yeah. I always think if you're working with a good team of people, and we, we yeah. do have a laugh. Like, you know, there are, there are times when you're shouting at each other in the background because stuff isn't going very well. There's no point in me shouting now because there's absolutely <laughs> nothing that any of our guys can do about this. It's, uh, yeah, Is this, this now the start of Rally X? Yeah, we're, we're getting to, to junior cross car, isn't it? I think, I think it's the next race. Do you? Yeah. Is that right down in the pre-grid? Is yes. that the, the pre-launch area? Yeah, yeah. That your little army's in. So where have you guys been staying? Have you been uh, diving into Norwegian culture while you <laughs> haven't been on what, track? O'Leary's <laughs> Bar it was where we went in Eskilstuna. We went with bowling. <laughs> so the last time we went bowling was with you, wasn't it? Yeah. We went disco bowling. Yeah, and so basically we got back to the car park. <laughs> the, we had, it was Eskilstuna, was it the town? Yeah. yeah. And there's a car park, <laughs> and under the car park, sounds weird, I know it was, it was a bowling alley. Me and Hal were like tired. We've been on air for 15 hours or whatever it is on a normal weekend. And Molly goes, let's go bowling. Nah, I'm not up for it, not at all. <laughs> um, and then uh, and then we did go bowling, basically, didn't that we? That was great. Chip turned up from Nitro, and then uh, we went to a bar, which was O'Leary's. But can we just rewind a bit and, yeah. and remind everyone that I won by like... Oh, yeah, 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 she did. She did. So we had <laughs> I a, got like a 200 lot. points. Yeah, you did. You smashed us. In the second one. Yeah. I I, won did the you win the first one? <laughs> How won the first one? He was very good last night. Until the Estonian guy last night got three strikes what? in a row on the 10th round. Good. Literally three in a row. Boom, boom, boom. We're like, okay, game over. <laughs> I say, yeah, so Moller's won. Anyway, then we went to O'Leary's just as we were going to go home the guys at Chronomoto the timing company came in so we didn't go home did we mm -hmm. and Hal ended up having his glasses used to stir cocktails at some ungodly hour 
Um, but luckily for us, that was on the Sunday, of course. We wouldn't have dreamt of doing that on the Saturday night. Uh, and so we were full in full professional mode the following day. Nobody felt terrible. <laughs> One for the book. <laughs> Do you want to be in the book? We're going to write a book. Really? Yeah. But Hal's writing it. He doesn't know that yet. But he's going to, because he, he like, look, he's done two books already. I can't write a book. I can say stuff. People want an audio book. What would you write a book about? If Everything. You could, if you could. All, the, all this stuff. The, the, the stuff. All the stories. The real Ride Across World. Yeah. The, just the, the, the fun we've been lucky enough to have. You, the you stories in the background. The stuff which is either not suitable for broadcast or you just can't share it because it's politically, you know, of the time with manufacturers. You know what it's like. The there deals was, that didn't, didn't come off, yeah, blah, blah, blah. There's someone who was very nearly driving for somebody else. It didn't happen. All that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I know it's a niche audience. It's probably not going to be, a, you know, it's not going to end up on the Times bestseller list, but I, I think they're a great time I'd writing it. it. Huh? I'd buy it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, me too. All right, that's yeah. three copies. <laughs> Let us know. Oh, wow. Right, that is Junior Cross Cars in the pre-grid and ready to go. Two minutes until we start. Do like and subscribe. Uh, Grease is dusty. Yep. I agree. Uh, what else are we saying here? Riga is probably the furthest rally X can visit. Maybe. I mean, I would, I'd love to see them come somewhere. Before you have to do some proper work now, can you take a selfie of us three? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go watch some rally Hold cross. Just <laughs> because I can. Here we go. Let's <laughs> quick selfie. There you go, Mollis. Yay. Mate, right, so I'm good to see here. you. Thank you so much. Come out, you bring yeah. it. Yeah. So good to see you, mate. <laughs> you too. Um, and we'll and see have you. have fun, yeah? Yeah, have fun with the family. All right, have a I lovely will. day. See you Cheers, later. Guys. If there's a big hold up, please come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm empty. Right. Hey, when do we go on air? Oh, what? Someone's getting an invoice for this. <laughs> I think we've been on air an hour. Oh, really? Yeah. That might be one of my favourite hours of television we've ever done. Right, what else have we got? When you know when I was wandering the paddock, were you with my camera the whole time? When did the semi final? Huh? Were you with me the whole I time? I think we were split screen a lot of the oh. time. So, uh, three Rallycross fans here in the US. <laughs> There's more than that. We'll get over there for you, Mike. We'll get over there. You need to come to come to an Rallycross event. Come say hi. Uh, WRT, blah, blah, blah. I really had to cut the grass in my yard, but instead I'm watching a book reading event. <laughs> Not a single regret. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Oh, oh, racing, I wanted more banter. Nice one, Mike. Love it. Bants as well. If you're, if you're American, you know the word bants. That's epic. Another quality episode. Down towards the bottom there, Hal. I think, where are you going? You going back to stuff? You missing? Favourite bad racing car? Well, that's a great question. Probably don't have time to answer that. Uh, what Mike is like? Is that the RF that's Mike is live? I think it is. Favourite bad racing car? Ooh. Uh... What do you reckon? What, from Rallycross? Oh, favourite bad Rallycross car. <laughs> <laughs> One for the book. <laughs> you know, no, we're not ready for this yet. Um, Andrew Coley podcast. We've talked about doing a podcast, haven't mm. we? We, need, we, could, we could do a podcast. be fun. We need a sponsor for a podcast. Uh, UK is a nightmare for the Scandinavian teams now. Putting the toilet, yeah. Unfortunately, Brexit is not great for crossing borders, which is which is a real shame. Um, there you go. I love to see them racing in Cape Town, South Africa's uh, Rally X track. I'd love to take. Uh, we, me and Hal have been to wet Island RX. You may have missed this concept if you weren't watching it yet. Where I think we had another horrendous amount of filling to do. We're going to take uh, a, a rally cross series around the world to lovely places. So we're talking Jamaica, uh, Barbados. We're going to go to the, I don't know, where else do you want to go, mate? Hawaii, probably. Well, I want to go to Cool Island. Yeah, how long does it go like places that are cold? We'll, we'll do an ice race somewhere. Isle of Sky? No. I'm sure the Isle of Sky is lovely, but it's, it's not the concept. I don't concept. want to go there. No, it's pool parties. The whole, basically, the whole concept is the party house. You can have a party anywhere. It on the snow. No. There's a party in Hullius next but week. No, no. I want a pool party. I want the day after to hit so we rate. Oh, hang on. Right, hang on. Switch the switch. Welcome to Grenland. We're here for round seven of Rally X 2023. You're looking at the standings for Cross Car Junior. Mike Cluito leads after four qualifying sessions. 50 points all the way around. It's a clean sweep, 200 points. He's clear of Yulalami, Hagstrom, Vig, Solly, Hallinan, Christensen, Kinnan, and Sodom, Darbach, Svedlin, and Oskarsson. Hallinan in the championship fight was in P2 until yesterday. He had a little problem and dropped down the order. What did he do, Hal? Can you remember? It was in that final qualifying session, wasn't it? 
Uh, did he? He missed the Joker. He missed the Joker. And Sorry, I was having a penalty. Drink. No, it's fine. So Hallinan dropped down a little bit. He is still on a front row. Remember, for Junior Cross Kai, it's only two semi finals here because the entry was only 20 odd cars. Once they get up towards 30, they end up with three semis. So it's going to be the top three from each of these. And I was thinking yesterday they had three house, so I thought Hallinan was still on the front row, and he is not. Hallinan's on row two. Championship as it stands, Yulalami leads by 11 points from Lowry Hallinan. Oito is a further seven back, but remember there are drop scores to take into account. Only one drop score for the support categories. Everybody else it is, oh sorry, Supercar it is two. So front row, you've got Michael Oito and Hampus Hagstrom. Next, you've got Solly and Christensen, Victor Christensen, Anton Soderholm at the back, and Carl Svedland over on the right-hand side. And the best thing about this is five of the cars are blue, so this will be fun. Uito and Hagstrom on the run to the first corner. 9,200 RPM is where they're at. And away off the line, good start. Uito though recovers and manages just to hold that inside line. Thought he was going to get swallowed up there by Hagstrom or Christensen trying to come around the outside. Christensen P3, a little bit dusty, but it's so much drier than yesterday. You know, we had heavy rain an hour ago during the build, but he's actually been on air so long that it's dried up already. So Uito leads. Uito had a great run, France uh, changing out of first gear there. Made a pretty equal start and for with, with uh, Hagstrom and then just pulled away as we see Solly take the early joker. Needs to get the hammer down to try and catch the pack. Remember the top three go up from this with only two semi-finals for Crosscar Junior, which makes it a little bit easier. It's so hard to make the top two, isn't it, in the uh, Crosscar yeah. semis that we're going to see a little bit later on. Although we do always say that when you've got more semis, there is more depth, of, uh, sorry, a, a more spread of talents. You've got, when there's 18 drivers go through, the front of the grid is very fast and the back but of the you, grid not quite. But then it affects the joke strategy, doesn't it? Because if you've got the top three that are great on pace and three that qualified at the bottom of the order behind, it's very difficult to, to joker and not get stuck in that traffic. It is indeed five laps instead of three. Gap is at the minute 1.2. And these guys, you remember, don't have spotters to when they go, as Christensen has making a judgment call around Christensen a little bit loose in the way and we're hoping to get out in front of Solly in the background but Solly I think has beaten him to it. So dropping back towards the back of the pack so oh, the window yesterday was what how three and a half roughly was it? It did obviously it varies a little between classes and it varies a little with the weather. Yeah it was pretty consistent between the classes though wasn't it? I think that's largely because of the entry speed and then how uh, slow that chicane is in the middle so that really takes the momentum out with the big fast cars like the supercars, but the junior cars can carry a lot of speed through that narrow that narrow part. So it was pretty consistent. Sometimes you see a massive difference, don't you, between a supercar joker time and a cross car junior joker time, for example. Down to the bottom of the hill. There's that bank bent you were saying earlier. Well, who was it you said to us yesterday? The speed you can carry through is ridiculous. I was watching Evgen again earlier on today, and he was so late on the brakes into there in the Norwegian event. He like so late after the jump crest on the back straight fully lit desperately trying to catch up the baby yeah. and, and just still got into the corner with the banking yeah and I, I i love that that aspect i would like to see more banking like that julius uh, velodrome is brilliant but it's quite slow into it isn't yeah. it whereas here you can really throw the car in you rely yeah. on, on gravity really it's just physics and it's, not, Hammer saying, yeah. it's just physics yeah but it's, it's great seeing that different element it's not even much either it's not you know it's not banking you see it in NASCAR, it's, it's, it's look, look at it here, you might see it. No, nah, but if you went and took a marble jump. to the top of it, it would definitely roll down look. quickly. It's just slightly dished, but it just, that difference is enormous to the pace at which you can go in, and some of the different lines you can take as well. It's a great performance by Oito Hagstrom is there. Solly looked to be on your timing screen top left, so that's Oliver Solly, um, because annoyingly they, uh, they seem to take his middle name instead of his last name. Uito had a, a shocker, really, in... Uh, yeah, Yukovil, I remember, disappeared over that bank, didn't get a, a final on the opening day. And then uh, yeah, I think something happened on day two. I don't think it was in the final either day in, uh, uh, in Finland. They wasn't fifth in the semis both So this days. is absolutely smashing down the hammer to say, I'm in for this title fight and I'm going to do everything I can to win it. I'm pretty sure he led the standings when we went to Finland, and by the time we left Finland, he was down in P3. As you say, there is one drop score, you said, didn't we, Hal, but they have to count both Norway and Sweden. Absolutely correct. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so he can only drop one of those finish events. So Ito comes out from the joker lap over the gravel section. Behind Hagstrom makes it through as well. They got themselves a nice gap over Oliver Solly. Solly is P4 in the standings. Ito is P3 at the moment. 
ahead of him, Hallinan and Yulalami. But he's laid down a marker here coming through the left-hander and he'll be hoping to take the win in the final later on today. Gonna be on pole. Uito wins semi one from Hackstrom. Solly will go through as well. Christensen, Svedland and Soderholm. Their weekend is over here in Norway. Another look at the start. Brilliant start by Christensen on row two, was it? And then just maybe, I reckon, pulled second gear slightly too early. It looked like he lost a little bit of momentum. Yeah, that's where Uito took the, uh, took the margin there. Good run from him. Such precision from these juniors. We uh, were rushing around the paddock earlier, filming some stuff ahead of Julius last weekend, uh, next weekend, sorry, earlier, and uh, past Larry Hallinan's tent. And uh, I'm always astounded at how uh, young these uh, these kids are racing look, in juniors. Look at that, how as well. And the, the car line. control, amazing. Proper, a proper, you know, almost almost baby style flick, but then going, no. And this is why it's later. not really a surprise when someone like Lucas Anderson stepped up supercar lights because they're already so good. Yeah, they are. In the comments, Nils Anderson saying, uh, are we coming for NGK Masters? I would love to do that event one year, I really would. I don't yeah. think it's going to be possible this year, but I would love to do NGK Masters. Just saying that, would you be up for that? Yeah, I've, it's just, yeah it often clashes, which is very disappointing. Yeah, it's, yeah it'd be nice if it was, yeah, it's a, it's a cracking event. That's an event I will I'd do love that. to do some TV do coverage it. for. I think that'd be absolutely brilliant, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'd, 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 I'd rather, rather race. Rather drive, yeah. yeah, I'd rather race it. So yeah, I mean, basically, to be fair, that goes for F for any rally cross series. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, totally. But, yeah, and then what else have we got? Someone saw a Lamborghini uh, doing rally cross. Yeah, that autocross. That autocross, was. it was. Yeah, and somebody, somebody saying the dude with the drone is good. Yes, he, he is indeed. Vigo Koch, you can find him on Instagram. Yulalami, Dennis Vick, Hallen and Kinnan and Darback and Oskarsson. It's Lowry Hallinan from the second row, needs to get a good start. He gets an absolutely brilliant one up through the middle there, up into P2 immediately. Going to try and go around the outside in turn one. Yulalami's going to beat him to turn one. Is he no? Hallinan goes late on the brakes and from the second row gets the whole shot on, oh, then gets ran from behind. Bogged down in the corner. Yulalami has contact with him and then goes around the outside. So something happened to Hallinan. Hallinan in turn one. Amazing drive to get to P1 and then that little issue dropped back. Definitely. Not over, obviously he's only got to go top three to get through, but something happened in turn one. And brilliant from uh, Pontus Oskarsson to avoid all the carnage that was going in, in turn, going on in turn two. Danny Svick involved in that, losing a lot of time. Hallinan's all over the back of Yulalami through the penultimate corner of this opening lap. He's going to look to the inside, no he's not. He's going to follow his compatriot through the final corner. These two need to work together to pull away from the chasing pack. Pontus Oskarsson, who rolled in Q1 on Friday evening, Sick from the grid there to run P3. He's going with the leading duo. This will be a great result for Pontus Oskarsson, who has uh, improved radically in his time in Rally X Crosscar Junior so far. And the top three are pulling away, aren't they? No rear wing for Oskarsson. Well, because it's in turn two after he rolled on uh, Friday evening. Exactly. One. But interesting. You would think that you sometimes I wonder whether or not a rear wing on a junior cross car is, is necessary. I always remember that interview with Chris Atkinson when he. Uh, went off in uh, Finland in the Subaru and at the stage end said, oh, and you've lost a rear wing. And he said, oh, have I? I didn't know, but it did feel a bit loose. Yeah. So I wonder if it's... I think something at like high... Somewhere like Finland, obviously, a lot of jumps, a lot of crest, high-speed stuff, you're going to notice it, aren't you? Well, I remember Subaru. Do you remember when they came and did um, ARX and then they went wing testing at Trois Rivières the following they day? They removed the middle of the wing. Yeah, they were cutting sections out of hugely expensive carbon fibre wings, desperately trying to find a bit more top speed on the straight. Trois Rivière was always the fastest place on the calendar, wasn't it? Oskarsson's all over the back of Larry Hallinan. Coming out of turn two, this is an inspired performance from Oskarsson. Yulalami, is there pace go. management here from Yulalami, or does he have an issue? Oskarsson goes in, should have enough here. It was uh, some 4.6 up, or 4.8 up the road. Yes, yeah, so and the top three look have, have gapped enough in the first three laps for them to come out and joker in front. Dennis Vick, who I saw yesterday, he's uh, in the white buggy there in P4. Lost out badly in turn two with the contact with uh, Kinnan and, and uh, Darbach involved there in uh, the opening corners. I wonder if um, Vigo's able to do more laps. I think he is more laps with the cross car junior than he is with the, the faster cars. Because the quicker the drone goes, the more he, the battery comes down. Yeah. He had to down it. Yeah, do you remember? Yes, so yesterday, if you're watching yesterday, Vigo couldn't fly the drone because it was so wet. Um, so he brought it down for a few sessions. Then the supercars went out and he goes, yeah, I decided the margin for the wet was higher with supercars. And basically what he was saying was he didn't want to write off a drone in the pouring rain in the other categories, but for supercar, yeah, go on then. So he sent it up in the rain anyway. Hallinan with a lovely joker lap. Going to come out just in front of Oscar. Best lap of the race so far is uh, Dennis Fitt with a 48.5. 
Uh, disappointing for him to miss but out. Uito did a 47.9 in the previous run, so significantly quicker for uh, the first race. You can see Yulalami off in the distance. Hallen will be able to see that as well. Hallen and Oskarsson are gapping big behind. Here is Yulalami. And Yulalami has just done the best lap of the race so far when he needs it most. With uh, Hallen in the Joker, he really had to nail that to build a margin. Pontus Oskarsson's led on the fastest lap of the race. He's having a great run, but Yulalami, I think, will have done enough with that great lap, unless Hallen could do something in these couple of corners. 3.8 seconds is the margin. Yulalami backs it in. It's a wonderful piece of car control the whole way through the corner. The exit speed is brilliant. Hallen is going to be there, but not quite close enough. They're both on it, aren't they? They are absolutely on it. Our two championship prize fighters going at it here in semi-final two. Yulalami, who leads the standings at the moment, comes through the last left-hander with Lowry Hallen right behind. And those two are going to go through to the final along with Oskarsson in P3. Fantastic drive. Pontus Oskarsson as well as P6 on the grid. That so has a that, really good that's performance. That's a career best drive for me from Pontus Oskarsson. Let's watch the first couple of corners. Didn't actually make a great start. 17th in the standings coming here was uh, Pontus. Made the final last time out in Kovala. Inside line, look, Hal, and everything kicks off. Oskarsson does get caught up in it. They, they run a yeah. bit wide, look. Gets into third, and then it's almost like he just goes, well, okay, I'm going to follow you. Well, Vic was uh, going up the inside of Darbach, and it just didn't work out. They got tied together. Got, uh, Pontus Oskarsson, sorry, got up the inside. Yeah, Hallinan just didn't get it stopped, did he? But a brilliant first couple of corners from the second row on the grid. A lot of respect between these drivers as well. As we discussed on the broadcast yesterday, they race together a lot in the Finnish National Series. They'll know exactly what each other's foibles are. Strong performance from them both. Shame for Dennis Vick not to make the final. Top three went through from semi-final number one. One car from each row from semi-final number two. But crucially, we have got the top four in the championship fight are through to the final here in Norway. That's Yulalami, Hallinan, Uito and Solly, they're all going to be in the final later on today. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? I've really enjoyed this show. How? How dare you? That was the top gear mug that I gave you, this, like the, when you picked me up from my house with a T in it and you've disrespectfully thrown it on the floor. If I ever do that again. I was just operating the mouse to read the comments. Says, oh, fair enough. Hang on, the race. Hang on, there's racing again now. Can we not just go back to Hamland? Who recreates loose, loose women. women? Loose women is a TV chat show in the UK. Get out a TV chat show. Someone, let's get one. Come on, a motorsport TV chat show. What do you reckon? I might just post the first hour of that. Ah, there is an legend. absolute legend, and also the biggest rallycross fan in the entire place. Yeah. Per Eklund, for Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jinx, yeah, if you're wondering, Per Eklund. I love that, he's there with his high definition glasses on, just in case the snow banks can't be spotted. Standings for Crosscar, Elias Svensson, the TQ, top qualifier from Eek Merstad, Enholm, Wilsberg, Kim Lenga, Lorenzen Elias and Yuga Baldins, Huka, Grane, Sexetra, Higginson, Blunkvist, Hoffman, 18 cars going through to three semi-finals. Herskine and Niemi and Jimmy Osterberg making the cut. Uh, underneath Osterberg, you'll see the other three cars from Pace did not make it, and that's why they were out last night bowling and uh, what else? Bowling and playing. What was it? The other thing? Shuffleboard. Yeah, By the way, uh, the UK won two-one, didn't we? At shuffleboard, but entirely due to Hal Ridge. So it's two-one to the UK. Well done, us. Svensson, Wilsberg on the front row. Eliasson and Hukar on row two. Brilliant start. Hukar's coming around the outside. Bit of contact there in the back of the pack. Hukar going to get up into P2. Oh, oh, oh. Just about holding on everybody sideways behind. That was carnage at the bodywork. Hanging off the back there of Wilsberg's car. And I think damage to it as well. Massive Listen to the commitment. noise. Yes. Massive commitment from uh, Hukar through the first couple of corners. There's damage to quite a few of the cars here. Eliasson's hood is up as well. Hal on the front of the car there, you can see. I'm pulling off in the background. But the, the difference in RPM immediately. And for the first time, there's just a couple of little bumps in that braking zone. But it is uh, Elias Svensson who leads out from, from Riku. Hukar in P2 has come up from row two. They're dragging a little bit of dirt out of the apexes and just straight into maximum attack mode. The number five there with the, the bonnet off is Noel Iliasson. 
be interested to see the replay. He's running to turn one. It wasn't yeah. even turn one, it was the run two turn one. Somebody, I think, must have missed a gear or just not got it hooked up. And another great start from Pole as well. And Pole hasn't really been used this weekend because it's on the far left of the grid as, as you're on the grid. Um, or far left as we look at it, sorry. It's the right as, you, as you're on it. Oh, and backing it into the Joe Club. Eganson on a massive push from the back of the grid. P5 trying to make up for lost ground. What was the gap last time round? Eganson was only 2.5 off. Now it's up to the others to try and edge that gap out a little bit further. As they come over the line this time, what's the gap for the top three? Hukar Eliasson, 2.6, and then back to Eganson. It's getting much rougher there on the way into turn two, isn't it? With all the water yesterday, didn't quite have the same effect, but there's been a lot of running so far today here with the different categories. Remember, only the top two are going through. Look at the gap already, Hal. It's, it's four seconds between P3 and P4. Take a look at the standings as well. Spencer's got this done, hasn't he, barring yeah. any sort of disaster. Hukar's in a little bit of danger from him. Sven Eliasson. Svensson's fourth in the standings. Hukar is fifth in the standings. Hukar was P2 last time out in Kubala, second race. Svensson got disqualified, I think, in the last time out in Finland. Mm -hmm. Correct, in the final, yeah. yeah. Disqualified in the final. Uh, Svensson's got a win, a, a second and a third from this season. Hukar's got a win and a second. Who Carl was putting all the wheelies earlier yeah. in the year? Yeah, just hooking it up. We were talking to uh, the guys yesterday about the new TN11 car that takes over from the TN5. They were saying there's a lot of development work gone into it. They reckon uh, that might be able to pull some wheelies off the line as well, which is good fun. Yeah, the concept is to be more like the speed car, be more speed car because the speed car is so well set up. For, it's just uh, been around, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really yeah. well developed, the speed car Wanda. What was the one before the Wanda called? It was just a speed car, and the speed car one does the FIA. FIA spec spec. Slightly, what is it, bigger tubes and stuff, is it? Look at that crash this team, Junior, bigger tubes are a good idea as well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're much safer, they're, they're built to a standard, and quite rightly so. Hukar now leads this race, de facto race leader having not taken the Joker. He needs to nail this Joker lap, but Elorison's uh, 4.6 down isn't going to be enough as long as the Joker's neat and tidy, but Svensson already on the back of Hukar. This is a very commanding run from Svensson. Hukar exits the Joker lap and will come out in the position he needs to be, which is in P2. You're on the final lap here. They go through the right-hander, and early is Svensson. Just like Junior Crosscar Championship prize fighters look like they're going through. Svensson is going to go through in the background. What's going on with Hukar holding off Eliasson? And Hukar will make the cut as well. So Spencer and Hukar through. Elias Spencer from pole, Hukar from P4 on the grid. Have a look at this start that Hukar gets on the outside. It's decent, isn't it? Now, where's what happens here with... Oi! So I reckon the damage to, to five, to, to number five, Noel Elias and the black car isn't done in this. Look, Hukar, there's contact rear to rear. That sends Wilsberg sideways, gets collected big time in the background by uh, Isaac Eganson. Look at Hukar here, around the outside of Turn 1. So where's Eliasson's contact? Here, runs into the uh, runs into the back of Hukar. Hukar's lucky not to have more rear damage, a yeah. puncture or some broken uh, suspension. Yeah, hit both, hit ran his own rear right, didn't he, into the, off the start, and then his own rear left got picked up after that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Particularly the last one is a yes. Great stuff. Disappointment there after the contact for Jan Emma Wilsberg, parked up at the side of the track. Svensson and Hukar go through. First of the cross cars to make the final later on this afternoon. People are asking why, somebody's asking, there's a couple of questions in the comments. Somebody's asked why the cross car's got no grip. They have, they've got loads of grip, but the, the way they're driven, you have to get them turned in, don't you, sideways, basically. And then obviously they're only rear wheel drive, got a lot of RPM, they don't weigh much, so lots of wheel spin. Somebody else asked, uh, and I'll take this question seriously, lots lots of different people watching saying, do you think Colin McRae would have outraced Ken Block on a rally? He said, yes, definitely. And I have the, mo I have the utmost respect for 
uh, what a lovely man Ken Block was, and uh, and he's he a, great a driver. brilliant driver. And absolutely, he's, uh, he's not given anywhere nearly enough credit for what he does. But Ken would have told you immediately that Colin McRae is one of the greatest drivers ever to walk to the earth. And uh, yeah, the, the two drivers are are, are different, uh, just different, aren't they? Completely different. Colin's Colin's my hero. Uh, uh, yeah, I could watch Colin McRae on board all day long. His driving style. Doesn't didn't suit, did it? Once the Zara came and mm. the likes of Loeb came Absolutely, along and yeah. diffs and tyres and and dampers changed to mean that driving cars in a straight line was quicker. For me, actually, wasn't a positive thing for the sport. You know, the technology that's made the cars better driven straight wasn't as good. I think they're a bit more. Look at Rallycross. Look at supercars. Damper technology. Yeah. While I, you know, I, I love seeing seeing advancing technology, better dampers has meant better cars and less mistakes and yeah, same thing. Here's another look at those screens we were chatting about yesterday. Uh, how caught... Um, did they fix the wiper? I don't know. I was talking to Alexander Vall. I did see um, Isaac. He was running down, which is reassuring. Running down to fix yeah. the wiper on the cross cup. He done whether or not he got it done. I saw him working on it. Well, it's not raining now, so it doesn't really... That's matter. true. It wouldn't have mattered. And then on the right, so that's... Uh, he, did, that's he did shout. I don't know if you heard when I was talking to him and oh, I was no. panting as I was, I was running, but he oh, said, oh, too, wiper, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, no, and he ran away shouting. Absolutely classic, which is <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's, it's funny, isn't it? I'm not saying that anyone's disregarded the wiper functionality, but all the money in the world doesn't matter if you can't see. No. And uh, yeah, if you if you're not very if your wiper doesn't work, Chris Thomason, uh, Extreme E earlier this year in Scotland, one of the greatest drivers in the world, just binned it straight over a wall and it almost down the side of a Scottish mine because he couldn't see where he was going. You, as you say, you can't, and it's the it's funny, really, isn't it? Because it's it's the it's on every single road car in the world, perfectly reliable wipers. And somehow on a racing car, oh, the wipers don't work. Sort it out. Rescue going on. Next grid is ready to go. They've got that car back. Yeah, I was going to say, look at Robin Grana's car on the outside of road two, and you can see the left box thing we were talking yesterday, a bit of screen at the bottom. See what I mean by pole? A mesh in between. Pole hasn't yeah. really been used this weekend. Yeah. Five car grids and pole's been P2, where yes. the marshal is standing. So yeah. pole has arguably got less um, rubber down on it. First down, Kimberley Enger, Ugar and Grana on road two. Brunkers did the Amy at the back. Great start for road two. It's a good start for the First dash should hold on here. Grana trying to come the long way around the outside of Kim Lenga. Can't quite get there. Going to have to hold on to P3. And hope he doesn't get out done around the outside for Martin Ugar. They're side by side now. Kim Lenga gets into the lead. And Ink Merced drops back in the P2. Grana third. Ugar fourth. And remember, only the top two go through. And there's some serious talent in this one. First, I carried a little bit too much speed in. Ran that tiny bit deep. And... Uh, Patria, Engler didn't need asking twice to uh, nip up the inside. And Merstad's all over the back of the race leader. Although losing a little bit towards the end of the lap, and as you correctly say, this is quite a fight, isn't it? With Grana, Nugar, Brunkvist, regular final contenders. Merstad's on a massive charge. Look at the rear of the car moving around over those curves. Grana's not showing his joke in hell, but he's a long way off the back. So I don't know what happened. Did you see anything happen to Grano? I was looking at the front cars. No, I Grano didn't. suddenly is 7.3 back and he hasn't joked. So something happened to Robin Grano on the first half. He was right there in the mix at this point. The first half goes Joker immediately. This might be to cover off Martin Ugar. Ugar was very sideways on the exit of the Joker. Watching the background, there come oh. Mercer. That's much nicer. Ugar was almost all the way out in the dirt. Mercer popped a wheelie up that crest out of the Joker lap section, but it's worked for him. Back into third. Good move, I think, to go really, to, yeah, no, to Yuga. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and within the window for Brunkvist as well. So Brunkvist in a bit of no man's land because uh, unless he can pull a gap on Merstad, then uh, yeah, he was on behind with the Joker player. Yuga, meanwhile, is on the fastest lap of the race at 44 4. But they're all within, all the quick laps are within the 44 to 44 7 for Enger, 44 6 for Brunkvist. Grant is. Uh, lost more time now and has Joker. Gimlet Enger goes into the Joker. Coming out now. 
Oh, and almost gets done by Eek Merstad. Eek Merstad just piling a bit of lock on there to make sure he didn't clatter into the side of uh, Kim Langa. More great spotting. Yeah, really nicely done. Merstad's got a good exit in the background here. Had that really hooked up. Eek Merstad looking to try and find a way through, be further up on the grid. Now comes out wide tight, right. Kim Lang, who's really been setting this up from a long way back, dies up the inside line. Brilliant, brilliant pass. That was fantastic race craft. Proper he had block a, pass. A good exit, did he, from that last corner and carried the speed the whole way up to the first you one. You could see it coming, couldn't you? Incredible. Carried so much extra momentum as Brookvis is going to joker and drop to at least third with Yugar closing on the leading pair. You can see the joker merge here from the drone. Yugar's respectful there, doesn't go for the side by side contact. Still having a look through, isn't he? Yukar came in so hot on the standard lap into that banking. It, it was wonderful to watch. I do like seeing these cars coming in backwards. Merstad was brilliant, though, because got up the inside, didn't cut the corner, but managed to get stopped at the apex and, and block any opportunity for Gimlet to get back up the inside as he had done on the opening lap. Robin Grana now set the fastest lap of the race. How showing what might have been, so he didn't, didn't see, I didn't see what happened on the first lap. Um, concentrating on the leaders, so we'll see if we've got it in the replays. Look at the gap that Merstad's got over Kim Lenga. Brunkvist and Yugar have got literally three corners to go to try and find a way through into P2. Remember, only the top two are going in. Again, Yugar carries so much speed at the end of the straight, really closes on the pack, but it's not going to be enough. Nick Merstad with just one corner left to go. From pole, lost the lead to Kim Lenga, and then made that incredible pass. A couple of laps ago, up into turn one, class, absolute class from the left hander in the background all the way up to turn two. He teed up a pass, textbook stuff, brilliant. So Eek Merstad and Kim Lenga go through to the final. Let's see if we can see what happens to Grana in the orange buggy. Watch this. So look off the start, Eek Merstad pulls second gear, the nose comes up just for a split second. Grana comes around to Kim Lenga here. At this point, all's good. Yugar goes around the outside. Brunkvist is now inside Grana. Something flies off the back here, Look, It's only a mudguard, I think, on Grana. Here's Grana. That's into the banked corner. This is Grana on the inside line. Collects. Spin. Oh, he does. He goes round, so he's a spin. Actually lucky not to get collected, isn't he? So, yeah, it was a spin in there. And I think we were looking at the Joker split at the time, but that was what it was. takes it with a 3.49.693. That is a fair bit slower than uh, Svensson was, but it doesn't matter at all, a 47.8 for Svensson. That might be my pass of the weekend, Hal, just for how far, but we've had some great passing here. We did say when we arrived, we thought there'd be passing, there really has, but I, I loved that. You could see the exit he got from that last corner and it just went on through the whole of that sequence. Enholm, Lorenzen, Baldin, Zizek, Cetra, Hoffman and Osterberg. Good start. Yeah, on the inside line of uh, the front row has got it. Baldin's is alongside here in the background. Oh, contact now. Carnage in the first couple of corners, and it's uh, Osterberg who's really capitalised there and got up into P3. So Baldin goes out wide, Osterberg third. Remember the top two going through. A load of respect between Baldin's and uh, the other car in the first corner is that um, oh, etc. Mistake by Enholm, sorry how mistake by Enholm and, and capitalising on that is Osterberg who goes up the inside. So Osterberg making a pass on Kim Lorenzen. And then, and, wow, and then gets out into the dust on the outside. What is going on here? So it was Lorenzen that was side by side with Baldin's had that contact in the opening corners. But Yumi Osterberg who scraped into the semi-finals in 18th place, in 18th place yesterday coming uh, one place ahead of Ramit Serna, his teammate, to make the top 18 and make it through. is now running second from the back of the grid. Lorenzen getting into it with Hoffman. Hoffman had a look, but just didn't have the momentum to get up the hill. Enholm's tidied it up. Bowden's, I thought, might go joker there, but hasn't. Lorenzen goes in instead. Look at the speed in. There is some impressive jokering going on today, isn't there? People have got their heads in. The grip levels are consistent today. And really using the gravel trap on the outside to help slow the car. Just run the wheel in, let it drag the nose in. That's a really fine margin between pushing oh, yeah. too hard and getting sucked in. Just using it a little bit like a snowbank just to 
help rotate and slow the car. Enholm on a massive charge out front, a 44-4. Rosterberg does a 44-3. The Pace Motorsport team will be on their feet in the paddock because this is a comeback drive from Osterberg. Gaps. Osterberg coming under pressure now from Bowden. Bowden surely can. No, he doesn't. Bowden should have gone then. Yeah, definitely. He yeah, should have gone. Hoffman because he would have been out well behind Hoffman. Probably would have covered off Isaac Setra comfortably as well. Yes, he would, I think. Isaac Setra making his return to Cross Car, having raced an RX3 this year with Bolland Racing. But Enholm up front, almost two seconds ahead, last time they crossed the finish line, is absolutely on a mission. I'm sure that um, Baldins will do an alternate strategy to Osterberg now. If I were Osterberg, I'd probably go on this lap just to make just to mark Baldins off. Enholm, 44-5. Sorry, last time around, a 44-6 for Enholm, a 44-6 for Osterberg, and a 44-7 for Baldins. There is so little to choose between these drivers. Is Osterberg going to go? No. Leader goes. Enholm ducks into the Joker. Baldins must go as well in the background. Where is Baldins? Is he gone? Yes, Bowdens has gone Joker as well. So Ronald Bowdens in, Enholm comes out now in front. Leads Hoffman in the in the mint blue buggy. That's not going to that's not going to trouble anybody just because he hasn't jokered. So it's about really what is it? It's Bowdens versus Osterberg, isn't it? Osterberg out front. Osterberg has the fastest lap of the race, 44-3, but then a 44-6 last time. Bowdens is on 44-5, 44-7 pace. It's very very close. Would have been good to see Bowden's Joker and see how, on, how lit he was in there. The gap is four. I think it's enough. I, I think, think it's enough for Osterberg with a tidy Joker lap. He's going to go in now, the blue number 11 machine on the right hand side, the extra route below the main lap. There's Enholm who's going to take the race lead. Easily done, wasn't it? I thought wow, it was going to be that, much closer. That is some Joker lap from Yumi Osterberg. Yeah, Bowden's was all over the back of him just a lap and a bit ago. We thought maybe he should have gone a lap earlier. It's worked, you know, they, they, strategy-wise, Bowdens is still right there, but it's not going to be enough. Enholm going to go through with the win, and Osterberg going through in P2, which is incredible. As Hal said, qualified 18th, was in P6 on this grid. Got the pole man and the P6 man going through. That makes up for the jump start in uh, Q3 yesterday, doesn't it? His it does, first it? jump start in five years or something. Is that what he says, really? Like that, yeah. Oh, mate. Shocker. Look at, look at the attitude of these cars. This Wonderful. is the contact in turn two between Bowdens and uh, Lorenzen. Just a bit scruffy, wasn't it? And Bowdens tried to get out of it, but when the momentum's with the pack, lost out badly. Enholm. Oh, that was some moment, wasn't it, as well, on the first lap. Just stepped sideways, did well to get the rotation done. Lorenzen actually lost a bit of time in uh, response to Enholm getting sideways, and that really opened the door for Osterberg. Enholm and Osterberg make the cut. Baldins, etc. Lorenzen and Hoffman done for today. I'm sure we'll see them all in Hollius uh, next week. I'm just looking at the championship. Uh, Enholm and Eek Merstad are P1 and P2 in the standings. They are both through. Alexander Hume, did, Alexander Hume didn't make the semis, did he, yesterday? He was P3 in the standings. Elias Svensson through to the final. He's P4 in the standings. Hukar through to the final. P5 in the standings. Grana hasn't made it. Osterberg, seventh in the standings, has made it. So, this is, uh, yeah, it's cool. Kim Lenga's a bit of a bit of a ringer this weekend. Fantastic stuff. Right, paperwork swap, uh, and we're seeing supercar lights because if you remember from yesterday, there are very few cars in open two wheel drive. So they don't have any semi farms. There were, were there four cars? There were, how were they? But we think Marcus Norman. He, he said, no, I haven't seen him out today, have you? No, he's out for the warm up, blowing the engine, yeah. Whereas, uh, whereas Tiger, uh, who's only the, only the rear deer, frankly. Anderson on the front, her row here with Ola Henry Steinsholt gets a brilliant start. Behind Enlund's already slotted inside uh, Ola Henry. Oh, they both run out wide. Enlund sticks Ola Henry and Steinsholt all the way off the side of the track. Steinsholt comes back. How gets through up to P3. Steinsholt somehow has recovered from that. How I think it's, uh, I'm not sure which one of the Haugs it is. The cars are so similar. Lars Eric Haug, that is go. in the 33 numbered car, under pressure now from compatriot Steinsol. Enlund oh. sent it into the Joker on the first lap. Enlund lost out badly there after a brilliant start. I thought Haug was going to be collateral damage as Enlund 
and uh, Steinsoll went side by side down into turn two. Enland, uh, sorry, Steinsoll gets up the inside of Haug in the penultimate corner. Great move there, great traction for Steinsoll. Gets a lot of understeer in the final corner. Pulling away though from Haug. Good move. Yeah, nicely done. This is all playing into Anderson's hands though, isn't it? With them messing around behind. Anderson, who uh, we were discussing yesterday, needed a better weekend than he'd had in Finland. But also saying that that character building weekend in Finland is so crucial. When you step up a class and think this is easy, it's not easy. It's difficult, isn't it, at this level? Because right here, right now, all of these drivers desperately want to win this race. Oh, then they want to win this weekend, and ultimately they want to win this championship. But it's like taking your GCSEs, isn't it? It's important to get to the next level, but no one will ever remember you for winning the Rally X Supercar Lights title in 2023. What it's all about for him is learning, trying to develop. Of course, winning will help him get more commercial partners and help him take that next step. But really, the experience is so important as he wants to climb to the highest levels of this sport. Yeah, working with a great team as well, isn't he, who've won everything at the highest level of the sport in, in JC. Literally everything. Yeah. yeah, everything, everything. Nitro World, Euro, the lot, isn't it? Um, and yeah, you can't, yeah, it's just a great place to be. You, I often think about drivers, you know, what would so-and-so have achieved had they been driving for so-and-so? And I don't necessarily mean had they had the Pueblo, you know, had someone else had Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes over the seven years or whatever that he dominated, same with Schumacher back in the day. I really mean more the people that are in a team, you know, what what, what kind of an influence would Andreas Eriksson had a, obviously had a really positive influence on Fraser McConnell. It really worked for him, but I don't know that it would work for all drivers. Same with UC Pinamaki. I've got a dream team, I think, yeah. who I would want to work with. Yes, but that, that's what I mean. You know, you've got your Pinamaki, Christop Joel Christopherson, you, you've got Kenneth Hansen. You know, the, the different styles of managing a team and, and, and managing young talent and developing them. And I just think sometimes, would this driver have fared better in this place? You, you won't know, will you, Vince? I'd love to think about it. Anderson leads from Steinsolk. Top three going through. Remember, just two semi-finals for Light. Steinsolk goes Joker. Uh, whereabouts is Edmund as Steinsolk comes out. Back round, Edmund is there so alongside the boy to the rear of Steinsolk. They had contact, of course, in the run for the first corner. You see the tie marks all up the side of the cars. Can you livery? Yeah. Cooper tie marks all up the side. Be new tyres next year, won't it, of course? Cooper stopping their participation in almost Yeah, stopping the production of the tyres, aren't they? Which is. Uh, I think it's a great shame. Massive shame. Missed yeah. opportunity by the company, in my opinion. They were bought, weren't they? Yeah. By some huge tyre corporation. Or oh, out of shape for Lucas Anderson down into the Joker on a big charge. Has a good margin over Steinsel. Doesn't really need to be pushing that hard, but finding the limits. Good way ahead. Steinsel, meanwhile, has uh, got her end of Andrew moves the car around so much on the loose. You know, I love that. Move, unnecessarily moving cars is my kind of thing. It's not completely unnecessary. In car box. Yeah, oh, anyway. Anyway, you've always got to flick it in. Anderson takes semi one. Steinsel and Endling are going to make the cut as well. How good Tornholt not this time. Ida Tornholt's had a good weekend. We saw her earlier on. She said that she was, um, she, she, she thought she felt really good in the wet, went out in the wet, hated it. Came back, watched some videos with Oliver Erickson, and he was just like, you're just being too impatient on the throttle, just wait on the throttle. And she said it came back yesterday. She was following Casper Jensen, wasn't she? It was brilliant. Anderson had quite a moment there sideways. I wonder if anything can happen with Steinsol here, because it takes out one, two, three, four track markers. Yeah, but for me, Enlund's put him out there. But Steinsol's also forcing the issue on the inside. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I just think there's there's always two sides to every story in the steward's room, isn't there? And it'll always be off. And that's. Uh, Good example of side-by-side -side action in the lights. A little lock up there for Haug. Steinsoll's had great pace. This was a close joke emerge. Enlund gets super sideways here. Gets the uh, pendulum effect going to get back into that penultimate corner. Good run. Lucas Anderson, Ola Henry Steinsoll and Martin Enlund go through. Unless uh, anything said about knocking down all the bollards in the world. Semi-final two supercar lights. Olofsson and Janssen on the front row. That's Simon and Casper. Max Oskarsson, Eric Berget on row two. And Nils Christian Haug on the back row. The other Haug.
jump start. Was it that what happened there at the back of the rear? I reckon the car must have gone the instant the lights changed and then backed out of it. I would have thought that was going to be a jump start, but it wasn't. Olofsson takes it. Casper Janssen, though, round the outside. We were just reading how quick a minute ago about Kevin Eriksson, and that was amazing for Casper Janssen. Brilliant move to take the lead. Carried so much momentum through turn one. Olofsson went to protect the inside to break that a bit early, and Janssen was almost left with no option but to send it around the outside, and it worked perfectly. I reckon he was watching, Hal. I reckon he was watching. I reckon Kevin said, show me you could do it, on his way out to the grid to him, and he's gone and done it. That was absolutely brilliant. Brilliant stuff. So Olofsson now then wants to respond. Remember, if you are not, uh, if you don't win, you're not on the front row in the final, and you really want to be front row if you want to get the win later on today. Janssen, Olofsson up towards the line. Berg gets in uh, P3, Oscarsson P4. Oscarsson's son, Pondus, has already made the junior cross-car final. He'll be wanting to join him in the last stage of this event. Tom Olofsson getting a little bit ragged in turn two behind OMC driver Kasper Janssen right on the tail of the race leader. Can't really mix the Joker Trashy up yet, probably needs to wait another lap. And the reason being for that is if he jokers now, he'll end up behind cars which are potentially slower, so it's, uh, he's got he's to wait, hasn't he, until the window opens behind him. So he wants, what, 3.5-ish behind him, doesn't he? Or those two cars to Joker, and then that leaves him free to do yeah, so. Yeah, he either needs to close up or to fall much further behind. Being yeah. in that window is not really where he needs them to be. Not at all. They're going to put in a bit of a gap on uh, Oscarsson, which is an ideal. Oscarsson's 3.1 off the lead, so still tricky to Joker from the front because you will end up near Oscarsson if Oscarsson doesn't. How, meanwhile, is some nearly 12 seconds down, so that doesn't affect the strategy at all. No, he can't, Andrew, because Oscarsson's 3.1. Now Oscarsson can, so Oscarsson can go next time around. I just think it's too big a risk. Because, he, because you end yeah. up half a second behind Oscarsson, you're only going to lose time in that scenario. You've got to go this time to, to split the strategy, but then with only a couple of laps to go, it's a bit of a safer bet, isn't it? You're not going to sit behind for Birgit for too long. Remember, uh, Birgit and uh, Oliveson teammates this weekend in FTS RX, so of course they can work together, but Birgit's close enough to not really be a factor in that. I would joke at both of the STS cars now, actually, if I was Sandra Holker make sure Simon doesn't get held up behind Berger in case something happens. Olofsson lost a bit of time up in turn two there. You can see the gap now a couple of car lengths, but he does go Joker. Late on the brakes, smoothly in. Dab it again, get that nose in on the gas. Lovely stuff. You can see the paint markers on the floor where the bales go, so if people do clip the bales, they can get them back uh, exactly where they were. Contact oh. at the merge in the background. Berger to the side of Oscarsson. This is for the final place in the final, don't forget. Oscars have gone the long way round now, looking to the inside. Oh, I think uh, these two are at it, aren't they? Yeah. That was uh, Birgit did follow teammate Olofsson into the Joker, then had the inside on Oscarsson. Oscarsson sent it back I in think, the final corner. I think Birgit thought that Oscarsson was there, how It was like he turned back out yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and Oscarsson was there, and he wasn't going to shut the door there, so he's actually left it open, thinking he's inside him when he wasn't. You're following Janssen through with the drone. Pops back out the other side, and he's done enough to be in front of Olofsson. Still the same margin before they went in, so uh, they both had very, very similar pace. A tenth of a second apart on lap time. It's that first corner move then that's done it for Kasper Janssen. It was a wonderful piece of car control that you're going to see in just a few moments in the replays. Crosses the line, Kasper Janssen will be on the front row in the final. Simon Olofsson is going to go through, and then Oskarsson coming through in P3. Looks like Birgit's got a problem rubbing on the, the bodywork somewhere. And finally, how coming up to bring up the rear. Have a look at this, turn one. Turn two, sorry, turn two. Olofsson makes the best of the starts by some way. Janssen carries so much speed through turn one. Olofsson's got sideways there, then checks up early to get the rotation done, or at least get the nose turned in to turn two, runs a bit deep actually, by which time Caspi Anson just sent it around the outside, found that area of grip as well. What a great job. Really good, was it? The, uh, he's had an up and down year, hasn't he, Janssen? Some Remember at the start of the season, just didn't have the pace we expected, but has fought no. back massively. Well, he won, he won the Night Trust Standings in the last year, and then he, sorry, he was the North American champion last year, he won the championship the previous year. This was Berger. So watch Oscarsson here. This is a joke emerge, this is Berger. Yeah, so Berger, I think, thinks Oscarsson is... And from there, he does look like he's inside. 
Berger has got an issue there. Behind us in the commentary box, he's pulled up and they've got the rear of the car up. So clearly something a little bit wrong with his supercar lights. Janssen wins it by six tenths of a second from Olofsson and Oscarson. Those three go through to the final. Pow, pow, pow. Now we're getting there. On to supercar, the headline category. Johan Christofsson, the top qualifier with a clean sweep from his teammate Ola Christian Vaby, who won the Norwegian Rallycross Supercar Championship earlier on today. Kevin Eriksson, Sondra Evgen. Sondra was P2 to Vaby in that race. Eriksson and Belevski, the top six. Ostring, Val, Tam, Omen, Nordgaard and Ike Merstad. Yep, same Ike Merstad as who's doing a cross car, making it through to the semi-finals. Nordgaard uh, had a retirement earlier on today in the Norwegian series, running the same car, but the car's back out. So Christofferson, Kevin Eriksson, Oli Eriksson, Ostring, Tam and Nordgaard in this one. Oh, good start from the second row for Oliver Eriksson, but he has to hit the clutch on the front row. Joran Christofsson up towards turn one, holds on. Kevin Eriksson, Oli Eriksson playing safe behind. Oli shuts the door on Ostrin. He can't get through to Kevin. So Kevin Eriksson follows Johan Christofsson down that back straight. With Oliver Eriksson right in behind playing rear gunner for him. I suspect none of them will go Joker on this lap, and we're right. Into the Joker goes Nordgaard, late and loose. Too loose into the gravel trap. That's not how it's done. Michael Tam goes in as well. Tam will lose a little bit of time there. Ollie Eriksson letting Kevin Eriksson know he's there as well. What that's going to do though, that slow joke is really going to open up the strategy for the OMC guys to try and do something different behind. Andrew and Ostrang going with the two Honda Civics behind race leader Johan Christofsson. Christofsson is a 41 3. The next best is a 42 4 on the first lap for Kevin Eriksson. Christofsson on a massive charge. Yeah, the gap, the gap is huge here, so Christophs is absolutely blind. He's going to wait. One of the Ericsons might go now, but they don't. Ostreng does, and now, now the strategy is absolutely wide open, isn't it? With all those cars gone, anybody of these, these three, I think they'll go on separate laps. Or I think they'll joke at Kevin Ericsson now to get him into that clear air to ensure that he gets through to the final and then leave Oliver Ericsson in the chase for Jörn Christophs, and at least that's what I would do. Christophs will probably joke on the last lap. There's no reason for him not to. Kevin and Ollie Eriksson look at pitching the Honda Civic scene. It'd be great to see those cars out because really they weren't going to do the series this year and then they turned up out of the decent weekend and then start of the year it's like, well, all right, we'll run them for a bit longer and, and now it seems they can't stay away. Passes up again for Jan Christophson, a 41 1. Howell's right, Kevin Eriksson goes in on this lap behind Ollie Eriksson, stays out. So Kevin with a tiny joker. Front left in, look at the rear as well. The Honda was always quite a big car, wasn't it? And you can see when you're trying to rotate it through a narrow joker. It hasn't got any smaller in its uh, time away, has it? But no. uh, these two will also be remembering when they fell over each other in the first corner in Kovala. They were both absolutely gutted. They had a plan and they just didn't execute it how they wished to. And they, they both ended up backwards in turn one. So brilliant teamwork from the pair of them here. This guy, though, Johan Christofferson. Remember, he needs to cracking results here if he's to get in the championship mix with Kevin because he's got to drop the two scores from Kovala. Oli Eriksson stays out, so Oli's going to go on the last lap with Johan. So that's going to be about whether or not... Uh, well, Kevin's already in the window, isn't he? Kevin's only 2.3 behind, so Oli's going to go through in P3 at this rate. So might as well just follow Johan home. Both the Eriksons into the final with a lap to go, though. Nordgaard stopped somewhere on track or pulled off. He's a DNF. Ollie's just stretched, sorry, Hal, Ollie's just stretched it back out to 2.4. It's still not enough. Fastest lap of the race last time around for Ollie yeah. Eriksson on a 40.7, but Christophson classically will have backed off a little bit to manage the tyres in the car, won't he? The top three look all within a tenth of a second on their fastest lap between the two Ericsons and Johan Christophson. Christophson next is the Joker. Onto the gravel section, you see him flick that the wheel as he crosses the gravel section, rotate the polo back in. The Ericsson's running line astern, but it is Johan Christofsson who's going to go through to pole in the final. He's still on for a clean, sweet weekend here in Norway. Kevin Ericsson, P2. Oli Ericsson, P3. Something's happened to Ostrang as well, I think, between him and Tam in the background. Strong weekend this for Ostrang, isn't it? Oh, you got, uh, yeah, it is, yeah. I was just thinking about Oliver Eriksson earlier, so we're filming a promo for Hollius, which I don't even know if they're going to use. 
And he comes out behind us in the middle. It's only a short thing, like an insta reel that we're going to use it for. I said, well, you can't appear, mate, and not say anything. He goes, OK, he said, vote below. Who do you want me to fire off in Hollyhurst, the white one or the blue one? <laughs> so, uh, and of course, he means his brother or Johan. So if that appears on social, um, do give it a comment, because uh, it was very, very witty of him. We were discussing it with him yesterday. I think if he fires off the white one, he would be in a whole load of trouble. And if he fires the blue one off, how? I think they, it'll all kick off. Johan, Tommy, Tommy Christophson's got big hands. Yeah, well, and Johan is, uh, is not someone who takes that thing very kind. I mean, he was only joking, but it was, it was funny. No, but Johan doesn't take him getting beaten very lightly, does he? You know, he's a five-time world champion. He doesn't need to be pushing quite as hard as he is here. I, I like that. I, machine, isn't it's, he? That's the thing, is it? I love the fact he's coming. I'm doing a race. Perfect I need to weekend. win it. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to do it or not? Oh, we'll see what the workload's are. I saw him, uh, where did I see him? Linden Hill. Are you going to do it? Uh, we'll see what the workload's like for the world Waffle championship. Uh, maybe, maybe. They're always like, coming. Yeah, of course. They can't help themselves. Of course we are. Rally cross addicts. Top three went through from semi-final number one. Who's going to go through from semi-final number two? Oh, look, Christian Baby. Sondra Evgen on the front row. They did battle earlier on today in the Norwegian final. Belevski and Baal on row two. Jens Baal making a great supercar debut. And then Omen and Merst down at the back. Our oh, dip cuts from Belevsky goes backwards and left on the grid as well as he burst out. Not ideal. Good start for Baby. Running wide, though Evshin loses the plate straight away, so evshin has gone back. Yes, Baal comes up into P2, and that is an amazing performance. What a move from Baal to get inside in turn one, outside in turn two. It's so much more experienced teammate, Ola Christian. Uh, sorry, Sandra Evian, Ola Christian Baby up front that Vahl's piling the pressure onto now. Matt Oman jokers on this opening lap, but Jens Vahl on his supercar debut is hounding the race leader here. Great stuff, brilliant. Look at maybe moving the car around, always tiny little inputs, finding the grip. We always talk about what a rally driver he is. He's definitely a rallycross driver these days, but so good at using that rally experience for just finding the grip every time you go out on track. Look how loose it is on the outside as well. Now it's dry, all that dust be moved to the outside of turn two. Really, I'd like to see them clean that before the finals to give the opportunity to go around the outside. Because at yeah. the moment, there's just no way that's going to work. The sweeper goes out quite a lot, doesn't it? So they may well do that. Having said that, we are a long way behind on the schedule, so it's going to depend what time uh, curfew is at the circuit here. Evian has been in the joker, got back out ahead of uh, JC teammate Matt Oman. Oman. Looking like he won't be in the Supercar Pro Final later on this afternoon. Still got the Supercar M Final to come, if you're wondering. So there's two different sections in Supercar now, for, uh, based on what your previous results were, for which one you can enter. Maybe does a fast lap race of 40.4, 41.4 for Vars, so maybe he's really stretching his legs. Quicker, isn't it? Chris Thompson and Co. were going to the first one. So, yeah, so the, the pace here of Baby is massive. This is to cover off Evian. Miles in the Joker. A little bit late on rotations. Drops the right rear off, but I think he's going to get out in front. Jens Baal, this is an epic supercar debut. Comes out in front of Evian, but now has to hold on for a couple of laps. And Evian has a, a little, well, a lot more seat time in a supercar. You wouldn't want him quite that close. We could have had to cover him off, I think, just in case. Absolutely, yeah. Great spotting to get that uh, covered off. Baal was giving it all of the, oh, we'll just see how it goes. We don't have any expectations. Absolute nonsense. When you've won in RX3 and you have all of that ability, of course you want to come in here and do well, and he's absolutely doing that. Look at the wheels moving around. Love it. Maybe just feeling the grip with the steering. So, such a good car control, as you say, from, from all the rallying. But, and a great sport earlier. He was really good fun when he great turned fun, up the yeah. streets. He really is. He's, he's all smiles. He's, he's a good laugh. Still, the pressure comes from Evgen, so this is the fight we want to focus on, is the fight for P2. Baby's out in the clear, so he's going to joker on the last lap. We will have a look for that when he goes into the joker, but in the meantime, that battle between Baal and Evgen. Oh, he's got a little bit more of a gap, hasn't he? Baal's maybe gapped Evgen just a little bit, just gives him a little bit more breathing space. Good run this from uh, Baal, really stretching his legs. Baby's, baby, not, ba baby's, baby's not gone Joker, Hal. Baby's missed the Joker. The Joker last time around. Baby's not shut. Oh, yeah, so, so, so the indicator, around. the indicator's not on. Yeah, okay, yeah, good lad. So maybe going to hold on. Just the indicator caught my eye, and I thought he uh, he hadn't been. Look, he's attacking, isn't he? Chucking it around big time. Baby crosses the line to go through. Now the, now the indicator comes on, just in time. But Jens Vahl, the driver of the uh, semi-final there, getting P2 ahead of Sondra Evgen. Roman comes across in fourth, and Pilevsky, that's a disaster, wasn't it, for Pilevsky off the start? Yeah, I think... Uh, 
I stalled it. I wonder if that's a problem or the RPM is just way too low, so it's bogged and he hasn't managed to catch it. This is the move. Really good look. It's not the bar. move of the day, is it? But it's up there. No, it's, yeah, but it's, it's the fact he's not had so much seat time, isn't it? It's what's so impressive, I think. There isn't a mark on either of those polos, is there? There's uh, been a very impressive day from KMS. Yeah. Very impressive weekend. Baby, Evshen and Jens Vahl going through. So it's top three from the first semi. Look at that car control. This is on the penultimate lap, as we saw it for uh, Baby. Just moving the wheel around that little bit. He sits nice in the car. Like, he sits at a nice height as well. Sometimes you think people are too low or too high. Well, what does it mean to say? But Baby looks very comfortable in that car, doesn't he? Ola Christian Baby wins semi-final number two. Jens Vahl, P2. Sandra Evshen, P3. And they will line up on rows one, two, and three in the final later on today. So of all the people requesting a shout out, this one's from Pat Duran. <laughs> Give me a shout. <laughs> we, we will, Pat. We just, very much so will. I'm just sitting watching a great show. I'm a bit black and blue. Just out of hospital. Broken ribs. Bruised lung. Other things. If, if you don't can't, know... Can't give it up. He says, give my love to the bloke next to you. Pat oh, had Pat, a, you Pat had a yeah. massive sending accident sending you our love, last mate. weekend. We're send, sending you our love. Everybody sent Pat his love. He had a huge crash, didn't he, at Pembrey and, and was hospitalised. So great to hear at home, mate. And yeah, sending our love to you from, from Norway. What a legend. Love, Pat. He, Pat, yeah. Pat gave one of my favourite TV interviews ever. Uh, I went to rally cross with my mum and dad at Brands Hatch and he burnt the TV camera. I think I told this story before. And he said, I'm just getting you licensed to pay us all your money's worth. I just burnt all the BBC cameras. You're a legend, Pat. We all love you. And we we uh, <laughs> hope you get like well that. soon, mate. We really do. Um, how fantastic. You can always have a shout out, Pat. Whatever you want. Um, my I'm, legs are burning. Yeah, I know. The sun, sun's out, gun's out. It's, uh, the sun's out, the roller's out. Here it out. goes, uh, out goes the roller. It's a green screen, really. It's all fake, to be honest. We're not even in Norway. No, that's not true. Um, we're going to go, because th that overran by an hour. I do hope you enjoyed an hour of absolute nonsense at the start of the show. I don't know why, but it's possibly one of my favourite bits of Rallycross television we've ever done. There was no Rallycross in it. So thank you for all your kind comments and, uh, and having as much fun with me, Hal, and with Molly as well. We thank Molly, don't we? Our pit reporter who came into the commentary box for, uh, for a few minutes at the start of the show. What a mate. Good work. Can't join later. us later on. Yeah, we've just got five finals to come. Six finals, actually, Pro-Am as well. So join us later on. Uh, I'd love to know what time, but I'm, I'm not even a guest. Keep an eye on social media. You know, you get a notification on YouTube. See you in a bit.
Right, this upcoming weekend, we are going to Hollius, the legendary Hollius, the original, the everybody's favourite, and it's championship deciding weekend. You can get your tickets if you want to come and join us. You'll have a fantastic view of the action. We love Hollius, don't we? Yeah, and everybody in the world loves uh, one of the most iconic rallycross tracks. It's had some changes for this year, new curves in different places. It's going to be even more challenging and, as you say, Andrew, some fantastic championship battles in every category. Yeah, so we're crowning five champions. Here's Casper Janssen heading out in his uh, lights car. Behind us over here, we've got the Ericssons. Oh, in fact, we've got Ann Ericsson here. Look, once now, come here, come here. You can't just appear in the back and not say anything. Uh, we're promoting Hollius next weekend. Get your tickets, come and see the championship fight. What do you reckon? Yeah, vote below if you want me to take out the blue car or white car. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good reason to turn up. So, yeah, we got Supercar Light, Supercar. Kevin Ericsson is in a decent battle with over here. Um, you've got Christofferson's outfit, KMS, the polos, uh, and Johan obviously going to be having to, to go for it because he's missed Kubala. So he needs absolutely ultimate results, and, and we always get great racing. And a great entry as well, and ev everybody wants to drive at Hulius. We've got wild cards like Linus Osland, we've got Peter Hedstrom, we've got Mika Wickenham from Finland, we've got lots of extra characters in the mix that can really spice up this championship fight. So make sure you come next weekend to Hulius, Sweden, final round of Rally X 2020. Rally X is presented by Cooper Tires, Allsbergs, Emstad, and Solentina in Ballage Huntering. One last dance here in Norway. We're getting ourselves ready for the finals. Don't worry, there is not an hour to fill before we go racing, although we did all quite enjoy it. Well, I did anyway. Uh, did you enjoy it, Hal? I did, yeah. Good, okay, there we I'm go. I'm sure I look really silly, but I'm fine with that. That's half the fun, isn't it? And you saw, hopefully, a minute ago, the thing we mentioned in the show earlier, Oliver coming up and offering to fire off one of the cars. Let's hope he doesn't actually fire somebody off, because that would be really awkward. Uh, but you just not never for know. us. No, not for us. It'd be great for us, but not so. Why did he fire them both off? Ooh. In turn one. Yeah. Of what session? The final in Hillis. No, I mean, it was a real decider. Like a yeah, then one. Oliver got on the roof and won and celebrated. And Locke was fully tried. into it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then what What would the stewards do? I don't know. Probably something odd. Or something after we came off air anyway. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which we'll have to correct in a highlight show next year. Aye, aye, aye. Six races to go. Dig deep, people. Right, here we go. First final of Norway. Round seven, Rally X 2023. It's Junior Cross Car on the grid and ready to launch. On the front row, you have Michael Uito. Next to him, Yunutan Yulalami. Row two, Hampus Hagstrom and Lowry Hallen and Hallen on the outside got a great start in his semi-final. Can he do the same again and bring it up the rear? Oliver Solly and Pontus Oskarsson. As Hal said, Oskarsson probably having the results of a weekend. Definitely uh, was in the final last time out. Can he get a, a mega result here to top of a brilliant weekend? Ready to race, light comes on. Jump start from row two. Looks like to me that is Hampus Hagstrom. Shame for him. That uh, means two Joe Clap to be taken during this race. Let's have a look. Yeah. Moved ages before uh, anyone else. Shame for him. Shame for us. Not impossible to get a podium for there, though. We've seen it before, haven't we? Not one of the championship runners, at least, as, as it were. I mean, Hagstrom is P8. Just looking, Hagstrom hasn't had a win this year. I don't think Hagstrom's He's had super a win consistent before. this weekend, though. Yeah. Indeed, yes. Fourth, fourth, fifth, third. Right. Another try onto the limiters for the juniors. Uito looking for a third win of the season. Yulalami looking for a fourth. Yulalami not been off the podium all year on the front row, but it's a great start by Paul Manuito. Lowry Hallinan goes with them. 
top three in the championship headed towards turn one altogether. Uito goes tight on the inside line, doesn't open the door for Yolan Army to get through. Hagstrom, I think it is, who's in P4. It was, but now Oliver Solly trying to look up the inside in the 195. Thor Hallinan was going to go for the undercut there in two, but just couldn't uh, find a way through. Yolan Army had the inside covered. Oliver Solly jokers on the first lap. We've seen Solly joker oh. lap one quite a few times, gets lovely rotation done on his cross cart. Wasn't it? Like, it was brilliant, yeah. He's, he's like 12. <laughs> uh, you just, just check that for yourselves. Just remind yourselves he's 12 and, oh. and think, I'd love car control like that, or reactions. Oh, and that's a lunge there from uh, Hagstrom, that is, isn't it? Up the inside of Hallinan. Remember, Hagstrom has to do two jokers. They're sat on the limiter over the finish line. It's quite a long run, actually, isn't it, over the finish line down to turn one, which is also absolutely flat out. Allen and not where he wants to be. His car cut out in turn two. That's why after that brilliant start, as Pons Hoskins gets up the inside of him coming up the hill, Allen has got good legs on his edge machine. He's got to joke from there, surely. Oh no, he's got an, enough ahead of Oscars. And Oscars actually ducks out and he's going to joke her this time around. But yeah, Allen cut out in turn two after that brilliant start in the semi finals. So lost a bit of time. Him and his father staying in uh, Norway and Sweden this week ahead of Julius. He's actually going to go to school on Tuesday with Oliver Solly. He really? What an experience. They're, they're, so they're here cool. to learn, and yeah. he's going to go to school with Oliver Solly in Norway just to have a bit of a different experience to what he gets at home in, in Finland. That's so and cool. For me, that's fantastic. Yeah, really, really good. What a great adventure for these kids, whether they go on to uh, become professional drivers or not. It would have been a hell of an experience oh, for someone experience. growing up. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. equivalent to people saying, go oh, on, going to university, meeting all these people, doing all this stuff. You talk to these kids, how they're really grown up for their age. Not in a bad way. I'm not, you know, they're just riding bikes around, playing, you know, playing soldiers in the in the paddock. Yeah, yeah. But, but you talk to them and they'll tell you about their setup and what went wrong and how they felt. And it's really... Yeah. Great to talking to, to people that don't know that well. Brilliant language skills. Yeah, amazing. But yeah, second language, wow. I mean, they've just, they've knocked us Brits, I'm afraid, into a cocked hat anyway, the Scandinavians. But, oh, um, yeah, but the, you know, these week. kids are speaking better English, yeah, <laughs> than a lot of my mates. Hagstrom um, Jokers is uh, dropping down the order. We've got no graphic at the moment to uh, show how many of his jokes he's done. I suspect he's done one because I think he'll probably drop down further once he's done his second one. Yuito, though, fastest lap. Last time around, a 47.5, a 48.8 last time for Yulalami. Michael Yuito is absolutely dominating this weekend. Yulalami goes joker, backing it in, through the left hand and out, back on the gas again. Hallinan is through. Has Hallinan jokered? No. He hasn't. Hagstrom hasn't Hallinan taken his... the bottom of the, of the timing as well. I think we've got a couple of little timing issues. All the names have disappeared on Hallinan's our screen. Still, Hallinan's still third, I That's think. That's what I thought, yeah. yeah. There he is. So the graphic not ahead correct. Ahead of Hagstrom. Hagstrom's actually not taken his second joker and he's now ahead of Yulalami. So any hope Yulalami had of closing the gap, which I think was optimistic anyway, because Yuito is on a mission, the reigning champion. I remember uh, Nicholas Dubinard, who writes some of the Rally X website content, described him as an alien last year because of his performances. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's absolutely proving that this weekend. Very fair indeed. Look at that, goes into the Joker with an absolutely huge margin of 6.8 over the next driver who uh, has jokered. Look at the background. Not even close. Yulalami's barely got a look at Uito. Uito had a shocking weekend by his standards last time out in Finland, but has very much uh, laid those demons to rest with an incredible performance. Michael Uito flicks the car sideways over the line. It's a great victory here at the penultimate round of Rally X. Yulalami P2. Over the line in P3 is uh, Halladen. <laughs> And that is your top three in the championship, crossing the line, one, two, three here in Norway, and should ensure that we are going to get a banger of a finale at Hollius in literally five days' time. Great fight to the end as well between uh, Solly and Oskarsson. Brilliant performance from Pontus Oskarsson this weekend, uh, I have to say, massively stepped up his game. Yuito, though, on a different planet. Brilliant performance, and if anyone would ever lay down a, a gauntlet for the championship fight, that was it. Commanding drive in the final, flicks the car around after the finish line as well in celebration. All crossed up, but in total control.
confirmation of the result. A win for Michael Uito. Well, I'm telling you it's confirmed. No graphic. <laughs> Uito, Yulalami, Hallinan. Uh, championship order is actually Yulalami, Hallinan, Uito. But with drop scores, it's going to be very close indeed. There it is, 407.2. Look at that margin. Class from Uito. Some four seconds almost up the road from Yulalami and Hallinan. Yulalami as well. What an incredible run, Hal. Three wins, two seconds, two thirds. Never off the podium all year long. That is just epic work. To be fair to Hallen and only missed the podium once. He's had three seconds, one win, two thirds, and then didn't make it out of the semis in Kovala. Okay, this one should be fire. Do love a cross car final. It goes one or two ways, either Carnage in turn one or a brilliant race. Svensson immersed out on the front row. Enholm. Anger on the next one, Hukar on the back, Jimmy Osterberg on the outside, but it's an incredible start by Svensson from the front row, easily leads. Hukar goes round the outside, touches across the gravel trap, back in again, surely going to come in down at the back of the pack. Osterberg trying to get around the outside, Hukar with a half spin, drops all the way down, oh, wheels in the gravel, car running over the curbs, absolute nightmare. But Svensson with an epic, epic start, he's out front. Osterberg goes joker, the one pace motorsport car to make it through drops in and the boys will be very happy with that after the other three cars be eliminated can Osterberg get in the mix here I don't know if I've ever seen anyone go off for so long and so far and still not lose loads of time that yeah. was wild from Rico Hukar but made it back onto the track I think he was actually probably a bit lucky that the front axle hooked up on the curb over it takes him and he, and he lost loads of places doesn't leave anything for the stewards to do Great. first down and Enholm look at this Enholm coming out wide gonna look for the car back first down already on the inside line so difficult turn two, isn't it, from uh, Wigan They're alongside there. now. They're alongside as they come over the crest. Has he got a look? No, I dropped back in no, again. He just carries so much momentum around the outside, but by covering off the inside, you lose a bit. There's various different ways around a single corner. Look at the rotation on the way in. Such small margins there on the kerb, just hooking the inside wheel onto that bit of tarmac you can see from these fantastic drone shots, rattling your teeth over those massive kerbs in the penultimate corner. I love this circuit. I think so this, do is, I. this is a great, great rallycross track. I think it is too. Completely agree. I think we've had a, we've been lucky to get see all the different weathers here as well and see that it works in the wet and the dry. Shout out as well, Hal, to the track maintenance team. I don't think I've ever seen a track so well good as this. And I've been to a lot of rallycross tracks. And they have done a brilliant job this weekend. Yeah, the Steinsolt family, the Val family put a lot into this venue. They've made a massive effort to get Rally X back here and it looks fantastic. And the track team have worked so hard to keep things going. Merstad goes joker. Thomas Eat Merstad drops in now through the left-hander. Just a little lock of the wheels to get more rotation into that left. So that's released Sebastian Enholm in the red bucket. That's now just in front, comes in side by side with Gimler, who hasn't jokered. Did you see the rotation there on Enholm? Flicked, really flicked the car the other way to make sure he was pointing in the right direction. A little bit of contact there would have forced him wide, because once you get understeer in these things, it's very, very difficult to get out of it. Osterberg's dropped out of the picture, really. Shame for him after getting further up the race uh, than he might have been in the first couple of corners, but still, to make the final, having not nearly qualified for the semis is a good result. Svensson coming down and going to go Joker with a lap to go. So Elias Svensson taking an insurance Joker, giving himself just one extra lap in case there's any problems. And uh, Enholm decides to stay out. So Enholm is trying to get here the overlap on Ike Merstad. Ike Merstad was right with him. They were so close together. I think I may he? have got Enholm and Merstad mixed up before, but uh, doesn't matter. Forgive me, they're both red cross oh, cars. Mate. We're looking at it from about a thousand miles away, but <laughs> we certainly are. It's and they drive in such a similar style, don't they, with Look, that early yeah. rotation? Watching them going into the the bank corner, it was like it was like synchronised drifting, wasn't it? I mean, they really <laughs> were. Oh yeah, rotate, click, rotate. In they go. With the fastest lap of the race, a 43.7. The next nearest time is a 44.3. And that's from Enholm, so Svensson, like in juniors, has been the dominant force this weekend. Oh, it's going to be close. Enholm goes now, but there's only 2.6 between him and Eek Merstad on the standard lap. Eek Merstad going to come in. Enholm comes out the joker, and Eek Merstad is there easily in front. So Thomas Eek Merstad gets in and out into P2, but it is Elias Svensson who comes through the last corner after an incredible start and basically just stretching his legs. Svensson crosses the line to take his second win of the season. 1-1 in Tjörp, wins one here in Norway. P2 and a P3 to go with that. Svensson, who was 
fourth in the standings, but with the TQ here and the championship points to come with that. Look at this in the background. Get in. Ricky Hukar putting on a show, linking up drifts, the whole way transition from the last corner. Look at the reaction times, the 0.73 away. This, here's Hukar, look, full lock right, understeer to oversteer over the gravel trap, flicks it back past that yellow post, which actually could do some tires on it. No one's ever got that far out. Uh, and then, yeah, back in, look, over the kerb, loses a bit of time. He That's one known. of those moments where you're going off, you can't believe it's going as well as it is, because I'm sure this thing's going to dig in and flip me over in a minute. Look, look at the look, commitment yeah. of these two. The, look, look at it, just, I mean, epic. Up on two wheels, there's another mud flap gone. This was the shot, I think, yeah. Click, click, in they go. Absolutely. Angle's the same. Look at that, wheel's the same over that black piece of tarmac on the inside of the kerb. Marvellous. Terribly similar, though. Those cars are Oh, they are, mate. Yeah, here, yeah. Please, please help us out. I'm becoming rather tired of liveries that are exactly the same. There's quite, there's quite a lot of them about in the world of motorsport. But no, you know what? They put on a great show. And at least there is a, there's a little blue flash, I think, on uh, Igmer's dad's car, which there isn't on Enholm's. The five blue cars in the Cross Car Junior final earlier was potentially my favourite. It's been a few times this weekend when I've been lost. Uh, you'll have to forgive us, as Hal says. Elias Svensson, Thomas Igmerstad and Sebastian Enholm are your top three here. Enholm leads the standings at the moment from Igmerstad and Svensson is in P4. So it really is championship protagonists left, right and centre. And the same is true in open two-wheel drive. Only four cars, five cars actually entered. Ola Henry Steinsholt never and, uh, never raced the Volvo this weekend. And this is all that's left. There's a comment in the YouTube comments saying that the fun track were missing a jump. I don't know if I agree with that, to be honest. I don't think all rally cross tracks need a jump. And uh, the I crest here the is crest. actually bigger than it looks on television. I think the other thing about the crest is it's a real test of commitment because of where it is. It's exactly on the breaking point in pretty much everything except the cross car. Um, Bjorn Stewart on the back row, Simon Tiger away from the line. Tiger got the TQ despite uh, retiring yesterday in Q4 because the entry is so low and he'd won three sessions in the wet conditions while Victor Johansson uh, changed something on the car in every single session. Um, Tiger still got the TQ. And at the minute, what's the standings, Hal? It is Victor Johansson, two wins and two seconds. I think uh, they were leads. tied on drop scores coming in here. Are they? Yeah. I think so, yeah. So yeah. No one can win it here. Largely. Tiger's locked in here, really because had there been a much bigger entry, he would have been in trouble yeah. having not having had the problems. But because he he was able to get through to the final, it's damage limitation. Okay, he's leading now as well, so it's, uh, I don't know what's the opposite of damage limitation, something else. But uh, yeah, do, doing a great job, and this championship fight's going to go all the way down to the final round. The hoodie is where the entry will be much bigger. What's the opposite of damage? Fix and limitation. Fix, 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 fix maximisation. Fixing, fixing on limitation. Fix maximisation. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, they fixed, fixed it. They yeah. fixed the car, fixed and he's maximising his opportunities. Yeah, yeah, fixed maximisation. That's a new saying. How rich can have that one? What a legend, a master of the English uh, language. It is English, by the way, wherever you speak in the world. Shame that Marcus Norman's not in. Uh, it is English, you're correct. Shame Marcus Norman's not in this race. His uh, Mercedes detonated itself yesterday, didn't it? With its yeah. uh, amazing sounding super I'm worried that maybe they won't get back they over did, next um, weekend. Yeah, they unfortunately think. said, well, they didn't say for sure. He said, look, I think maybe it might be over for Hollyers because, of course, they're not only back to back, but Hollyers is actually a Friday, Saturday. So uh, call your bosses, pull a sicky Friday. It's all good. It's the final round of Rally X. And if not, then just tell them you're on a really long Zoom call. Try not to laugh too much when we have to fill for an hour with uh, stories of Hal sweating in a rubber mat and a dog on top of a petrol tanker, you know? Usual sort of stuff for Rally X. <laughs> Johansson into the Joker, the first of the drivers to oh, go. Oh, it's deep. Cross the gravel, up the bank. Come on, get it back in. Good lad, flick it in. Unusual, very rarely see mistakes to be from Johansson, to be fair. Yeah, locked up. He's still going to get this done, though, because he's close to the back of Stur. That car drove very well through the Joker, didn't it? Through the Joker gravel, despite being only rear wheel drive. Yeah. When uh, I did an interview with um, Victor for a Race Tech magazine to write a feature about his fantastic engineering, and uh, his mechanic was involved, one of his mechanics was involved in uh, the discussion. And Victor's very quiet, very humble, and I said, so what's next? And I'll keep, keep improving, blah, blah, blah. The mechanic leans in and goes, hybrid supercar. Hybrid I, supercar. I, I would love to see the So would that. I, That mate. would be my favourite thing. I think there's amazing. quite a few major championships who would like to see somebody do a hybrid supercar. He could break some serious ground. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Tiger lifts a wheel as he blasts the BMW out of the Joker lap. And you can see there the drone following him round. Johansson gets back into P2 as Buren Stewart takes the Joker. Not the uh, 
the most exciting open tool drive final we've ever seen for sure. I do love the way that they lift the wheel. If you watch your hands the car coming through next, you'll see it will squat and then lift, squat and then lift. He was doing an anti squat yesterday, trying not to make the rear of the car sit down too much. He said it sits down too early and then I get too much understeer through the corner. So he's going back the other way on the settings so to, to try and find some traction. The old previous rule of thumb was that the independent rear suspension cars didn't get off the line as well as an axle, but then the independent cars were actually quicker around the lap during the URX touring car days. And uh, just a similar concept, isn't it? Trying to optimise the rear drivetrain. Start by performance so critical in rallycross. Yeah, you want a good start, but you want good traction on the exit of the corners, but you still need steering and corner speed. It's, it is a minefield. Simon Tiger through the left-hander. Victor Johansson has led the series for a while with a couple of wins and a couple of seconds in recent events. There was a DNS for Tiger earlier this year, but he's taken a clean sweep here with full points in qualifying and the win. His title rival, Victor Johansson, comes across the line in second. Once drop scores are taken into account, they are going to be very close indeed. It's probably going to be winner takes all between them next weekend in Hollius. Tiger crawled across the line. Wonder if he just massively chilled out or if there was a problem. Coming back in behind us seems okay, doesn't he now? Still running at least. Unlike yesterday. Probably just relaxed knowing he had a massive advantage. And these two are very fair competitors, aren't they? Tiger and uh, Johansson, they yeah. never, never get stuck into each other. Great oh, mutual respect in the open tool drive paddock. Yeah, you don't even really see a bad word said, do you? Even if there is an incident. Let's yeah. see next weekend though, because the uh, entry's higher, there's some new faces and uh, yeah, the competition's going to be tough. Everyone wants to win at Julius. It feels weird going to Hollis at the end of a season. Quite excited about it. Oh, there's a spin for Johansson there too. Stuart only just coming in to the paddock behind us in this uh, commentary position, so I guess he had an issue as well. My God, the sun is hot. It's absolutely streaming into the commentary box for the first time this entire weekend. Stuart's got a misfire as he drives past us. There's a confirmation of the result. Simon Tiger and Victor Johansson. OK, Pro-Am final is up next. So these are supercar drivers. Supercar Am is, is what it's called. Pro-Am is something that came really from GT racing, where you often had like a pro driver and an amateur driver sharing a car, and then you'd have to have different grades of pro and am drivers and so on. And uh, Rally X, cleverly, because I wasn't sure it was going to work, being honest, said, you know what, I think we've got some drivers who'd love to win an AM category and know they won't beat Johan Christophe. It has worked and it's been yeah. great. Yeah. And I, I'm exactly the same. Yeah, we think we had chat, didn't we, on the way to the first event? Eh, not sure. And actually, it's been great. And because because Johan Christophe's a five times world champion, yeah, he's not in the banger of a polo, but he's still in a great car and people want to get results. So this is a chance for uh, Hans Joran Ostring and Jens Fahl on the front row to shine. Mike Tam, Matt Soman on row two. Great start for Ostring on the front row on the inside line. Val looking like he's going to go around the outside. Jens Val does. Matt Zoman gets spun around on the inside. Been pushed uh, maybe there by Nordgaard. Look up contact between them. It's Jens Val who leads from Hans Juren Ostring. Michael Tam has got up into P3. Just flying up in the background. Great Val, start by Val. Val on his supercar debut round right the outside of Ostring, who's had a very strong weekend here with his self front supercar. Again, David Nordgaard's in the gravel and the bank this time in the Joker at his home circuit. Ostrang looks up the inside of Vile. Vile's got the better traction in the JC run, Audi S1. Maiko Tam third. This is actually going to help out Victor Franks a little bit, isn't it? That Maiko Tam's not going to get maximum points if he doesn't win this race. Yeah, they were saying, Franks, if you missed it yesterday uh, after contact with Oman, ended up in the barrier, which was a great shame. The car was uh, unfixable. They broke an electric cable, a high voltage electric cable there and had the R2 machine caused being electric powered. So that's worked out. On that last lap, Hal, there was just that one corner we were on the drone where I thought Vile had picked up the throttle slightly too early and just was under attack from Ostring. Then with Maiko Tan behind Ostring, that's kind of made Ostring look in the mirrors a bit. And now Vile has a, a little gap. Oh, and Ostring and Jensen side by sorry, Tam and Jensen side by side. Jensen yet to joke at. Just gets out well, after the merge. Dirty offline, isn't it? Yeah, Back so sideways there for Jensen in that. Dirty outside line, as you say. Well, another fastest lap of the race, a 42-2 that time around, a 42-6 for Ostrang. Not enough to close the gap. This is a stunning debut from Jens Val. 
won last weekend in the Euro RX3 finale. She was encountered as it used to be called, but was uh, disqualified post-race on a technical infringement that didn't affect his performance at all. It was on uh, Always frustrating, safety yeah. grounds and, and didn't, you know, doesn't detract from what he achieved, improving exactly how good he is. Now, where's Austrian gone? Look, no guard in the Joker. on the exit of the... Yeah, he's a long Austrian's way back. Problem, isn't he? Yeah, Austrian was in the mix, and he's now a long way back. You can see uh, Nordgaard parked in the Joker. Omen is circulating again. We can see him just ahead of Jens Wahl. And Austrian was shown as P2 on the previous lap, but he's now on a P5. Yeah, so, so something's happened to Austrian. Falling down the order miles back. Are they going to send him this time? Yes, they are. Jens Wahl goes in with a lap to go. Careful into the Joker, but why would you not be when you've got such a margin? Huge. The thing, the thing he, he's been brilliant. I, I'm kind of sorry he didn't get to really race hard for it, but he won't make any odds to him. This is going to be a win in Supercar Am on his debut. It's incredible, isn't it? It is, and he's still got to get back to the paddock, get refilled, and come back out for the pro final. Yeah. Who knows what can happen in there? Well, you're going to be full of confidence on you and also full of track knowledge, having been out much more recently than, than the other drivers have. Tracks at its fastest now, I think, isn't it? It's uh, clean, tidy, dusty. Online is at its fastest. Offline, it's very dusty, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, Interesting if Kevin Erickson and Jan Christophson end up side by side into there later on. Of course, it'll be uh, Christophson Baby front row for the pro final. I feel a bit sorry for Frank in, in that this score has to count and, and he, you know, to retire here when he's had such a good season. It's frustrating. It would be nice to see a good battle between him and Tam, but say nothing can be confirmed until next weekend. But we can confirm that Jens Wahl is coming through the left hander on his supercar debut on his final lap here in Norway to take a win in Grenland in Supercar Am, and that is a brilliant performance. Very strong indeed. Michael Tam, the great championship result in P2, and Jensen going to come round for third. Off the start, look. Better start by Ostring on the inside, but as well goes into second, probably, just edges ahead. There was that contact. Quite I mean, a bit of contact there between yeah. Tam and, and Omen. Omen Tam lucky not to take the roll. Yeah, it looked like it. Watch Tam, red, white, and black. Number 11 moving across Nordgaard. Ah, he's no, getting very taken Omen. around the front of Nordgaard, isn't he? Yeah, Omen moves into Nordgaard and actually hits the back of Tam. So well, no, I think Nordgaard Tam being there is just meaning that it was lucky that didn't just dig in and fall on its side, isn't it? Yeah. But I think Nordgaard's there, classic, in the middle and being squeezed the two cars either side. This is Nordgaard sending it into the Joker yet again. Done that a few times this weekend. You do, it? you do well there. Ah, oh, disappointed, uh, David. Yeah. You do well there to get the car rotated. Once you're going in that fast, you can see that bank in front of you. There's very little run up. You've got to continue to try to rotate the car and hope the gravel trap takes enough speed off for you not to hit the bank. You've got to go in with the rear first, really, haven't you? You yeah. can't afford to go in front first, otherwise you'll be in the bank. And yeah, definitely. Or you run out of road. Money. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna, you're going to run out of road and run out of uh, parts. Jens Baal, Michael Tam, Steinoga Jensen. That's the Supercar Am final done. Supercar lights up now. Not long is there for the Supercar Am drivers to re-prep and get themselves ready to go again. No. Took five minutes, run it back, chuck some fuel in it, go again, we didn't get out, would you? Maybe. Would you? I'd get out, yeah. Would you? Just chill out for a bit of a reset. Would you? Mm. Oh, I like it. Oi, oi, oi. I'm not a fan of sitting in the car. No. Some people love it. Not a fan. I agree. Lucas Anderson, Casper Jensen, Simon Olufsen, Ole Henry Steinsholt, and at the back of the grid, Enland and Oskarsson. Great start by Anderson on the run to the first corner. Or Casper Jansen trying to shut the door on Olofsson, but knows he'll have the left-hand side of the road. Olofsson maybe going to get marked here by Steinsel. Steinsel up the inside, Enland going inside Olofsson as well. As Olofsson broken the car, I think oh, he has. He's out, yeah, yeah, broken front right. That needs parking. So Olofsson is out of the mix here. Anderson down towards the banked corner. This is advantage Anderson then in the championship standings after a difficult weekend in Finland. The youngster out front. Yeah, oh, it is, isn't carnage it? behind en uh, Enland in the back. Casper Janssen. Janssen was also in the rear of Ole Henry Steinsolt. Steinsolt at his home circuit, absolutely his home circuit. Yeah, his dad was driving, uh, driving the digger yesterday, repairing the fence. So good effort from them. 
I say, uh, the whole of the, the past night, so everybody getting it all prepared here. Just look how smooth the gravel is everywhere, particularly when you come down the hill here. Have a look and see. And you just see how smooth this track is. There it is, look. Oh, oh. Steintoff's got up the inside of Anderson coming up the hill over the crest, going oh, low steady, to speed in. Wow, OK, Steintoff looking really racy here. Anderson's got to pick up the pace a bit. Look at that, that's the that's the under bumper, um, the framework, the whole yeah, bumper yeah, yeah. has come on. Is that off Steintoff? I reckon it is. That's unusual for that to come off the car. Oh, he has a lunge into the final corner. Steintoff nudges. Lucas Anderson, Anderson's fighting back as they go over the finish line. Anderson is not going to like that. Watch for a comeback move, going to go out wide and maybe look for the inside line on the exit. I would have come out wider than that maybe, but it's a bit dirty out on the outside of the tarmac. Looks to the inside, there's not enough traction. Joker him, Hal, I Joker Anderson now. Yeah. Um, Steinsholz had a lot of damage. I think it's the front framework from underneath his clamshell. They do Joker Anderson. This has got to be mint. Great it is. It's a lot of speed in, isn't it? And a good speed out as well. Now he's got to stay calm. This one he's really racing for. Comes out just in front of Casper oh, Janssen. More contact. Yeah, they need to Oscarson's wind it in a bit. As well. Oscarson's looking up the inside of Casper Janssen through the penultimate corner. Is he going to break early and go for the undercut? No, he tries hanging it around the outside. Get sideways. That's going to be a spin. That puts Oscarson out of contention. Janssen is close behind Anderson. Steintel out front, oh, damage to the front of the car. Look Edlund at the coming in hot. Look at the charge. Anderson's on in the background. Pitch the car up on two wheels through turn one. He's on a massive push. Right, Anderson trying to close it down. The gap was 4.1 to Steintel. Steintel goes Joker this time round. This will be for the win. Steintel through the left hander. There's a whole lap to go after it, but the merge is so important. Steintel coming out, going to be in front of Anderson. So Anderson couldn't close that gap down. Hadn't done enough. Remember, Steinsholt not really in this championship picture, is he, after uh, not completing all of the rounds. Coming in on drop scores, Simon Ollison was leading the standings by uh, quite a margin over Enland and Anderson down in third after that difficult weekend in Finland. This could change things up a bit. Enland has got 2.7 over Anderson. This is kind of about where Anderson finishes the championship. I reckon he'll get P2, but it will be close between him and Enland. So watch for Enland now with the yellow hood heading into the... Uh, Joker lap now, and in the background, Anderson coming through. Anderson still within striking distance of Steintel. Enlund comes in hot. Steintel on the inside line. Anderson there as well. They both get through Enlund. So two corners to go. Merge in the background. Janssen comes up behind Enlund, trying to go the long way around. Now looks to the inside. Anderson gets in the door. Goes two sideways, loses two places. Ola Henry Steintel turns into the final corner. It was an aggressive drive, but it's netted him a home win. He wins at home. Ola Henry Steinsholt in the background. The battle still rages. Enlund gets P2. Kasper Janssen. Anderson drops to fourth, and that's to Olofsson's favour with Olofsson. A DNF in this one. Anderson looking like he was going to win. I don't know if the ultimate pace just wasn't quite there or if he was going a little bit too clean and tidy. Watch Steinsholt. Steinsholt in red, white, and black. Outside of your picture now, right side. That's the back of Olofsson. Olofsson then has broken the rear right. Where does Olofsson break the rear right? Oh, no, front, 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 right. front right. So we don't see what happens there. Olofsson, because there isn't really, isn't really any contact, is there? No, I wonder that, if that was just from the kerb in turn one. So that's, that's Olofsson now. Broken, isn't it? So what happens to Steinsolt then? This is Steinsolt. Look, Anderson's clearly in front here. Steinsolt's coming under attack, look, from behind. Enlund smashing into the Can't back of... Janssen. That's not the cleanest lights race I've ever seen, I have to say. There, no. was, a, there was a lot of contact. This is Steinsel on the inside of Anderson. Oh, Anderson. Squeeze up the back straight, wasn't it? Yeah, tries to shut them. Now watch side. this. If you see this, watch for the framework flying out of the back of the front of Steinsel's car. Here it comes. There. That's it. That's yeah, the that's, framework that holds the front clamshell. That's up. the front corner, isn't it? He's yeah. pulling in behind us in the paddock now, and uh, there's a lot of bodywork damage. This is Anderson then behind Steinsel. Steinsel gets sideways in two. Anderson, who is a clean and tidy driver, isn't he? Because you can tell by the front of his car, barely a mark on it. This is Anderson coming at Casper Janssen. Uh, Oscarson, sorry. I wonder if Oscarson might have gone for the undercut there, but just was too far along on the outside. Had a spin, that put him out of the, the scrum. This is Anderson going for a move on the inside of Steinsholt and then just got that over-rotation, probably clipped the kerb as well, and there's nothing he could do about that. Frustration there. I th obviously wanted to beat Steinsholt, maybe after the contact with Steinsholt, feeling I want to get you back, but P2 would have been better than P4 in the championship. You know, there's a bit that has to go. Steinsholt's not in it. I don't care. But try to switch that on in your head yeah, when yeah, you're absolutely. raging a bit, you want to get through, and he wants to win. Like you said, he does want to win. Confirmation of the result.
Steintel, Enlund, Janssen, Lucas Anderson in P4 in that championship fight with Simon Olofsson in P6. Martin Enlund is in the mix as well, actually, Hal. I think on drop scores, I think it's going to be super close between Olofsson, Enlund and Lucas Anderson going mm. into the final round. Yeah, and Enlund. Enlund, where was Enlund? P2. Yeah, so on drop scores, one, two, on drop scores, it was one three seven for Olofsson, one two two for Enland, one two one for Anderson. Enland has got that's his fifth second place this year. His worst result, Hal, is a, is a sixth in the final, and they're only dropping one, aren't they? Yes. So he'll drop Neeson, which is a sixth. Olofsson's got three wins and a, and a second. Anderson's got three wins, and then a couple of yeah. I mean, he missed the semis in Kubala. Here it is. 158 to 146 and 143. So I think this is drop scores taken into account. You think it is? Yeah. So still a significant lead for Olofsson, but 12 points, you know, not insurmountable. Yeah, it's doable, isn't it? You got to remember there's eight for the win, five for P2, and qualifying 16 for the top qualifier, going down to one point for 16th. How big is the entry next weekend? 10 again-ish, or have we got another couple turning up because it's Holius? Yeah, I think uh, it's similar, isn't it? There may be one more. So advantage Olofsson, I would say, but they have to count Hollius. You have a bad weekend in Hollius, and it could all go wrong. It's not over yet. This weekend, though, nearly is. We've got one car being recovered from the track, and we're heading into the final race of the day. Final race of the weekend for Nordic. Rally X, sorry. I can't call it Nordic now, can we have? Terrible. Year. Beautiful day here. Fans up on the hill watching the action. We've had a great time. Hope you guys have as well. of people asking about things like is Michael Tam the uh, the AM champion maybe mathematically but you still got to count next weekend so if you had a zero next weekend and blah 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 it's not it's not that easy so uh, five days time we'll let you know if anything's done and dusted already no I no I'd say he's not the champion Michael Tam, looking at the drop score points I've been sent by uh, oh, you got some. Kronomoto. Yeah. He was on 68, ranks was on 72, so he hasn't taken a maximum here. And we've, you've got to, he was already behind, so you've got to assume that Tam could equally retire with, I don't know, yeah. roll cage damage exactly. from a crash in yeah. first corner. Franks could take a maximum and then they sort of neutralise each other, so no, it's not done. He's probably taken a significant step towards being the champion, but it's not over. Olofsson walks in behind us at commentary and his car is coming in uh, on a scoop few people with a bit of work to do ahead of next weekend. Nothing too carnage, he said. Franks has been the worst of the championship front runners in, in terms of a, a bad, a terrible result here. Okay, Christopherson baby, Kevin Erickson ball. Evgen and Oliver Erickson, Oliver Erickson, I thought jumped the start, but he did it. Kevin then went in response and now stalls. That's a disaster for him. Christopherson leads up to turn one. Baby behind the little tap on ball. Now up to the outside line and around comes Oliver Erickson trying for the Erickson move. But it's just too dusty up there, and he dropped the time as well. Kevin Erickson is on the back of the pack, having had a shocker at the start. So it went wrong for the Erickson's immediately. Anybody going to go Joker? Yes, Evshin slots out straight away. Wrong for the Erickson's, but absolutely right for Jens Vahl, who's just won the Supercar Am final. Is now on the back of the KMS teammates in third in the Supercar Pro final. What a debut weekend for the young Norwegian. Just didn't work out for Oli Eriksson in turn two, did he? He went for the big send, had the t had the tarmac been cleaner, I think it might have come off. You said that he'd like to send it, and I think also how he did to send it a little bit earlier, and then you get to see how more on the tarmac, but it's so dusty offline, look at it, so dusty. Where's Val? Val behind is in that fight with Eriksson. If I were to spot I'd be looking to the Eriksons with no disrespect, I think I think there's been a mistake, Ali's dropped a fair way back. Fastest first lap. For Kevin Erickson, a 41-1, a 41-2. Oh my goodness me, Oliver Erickson is in Sandy McSenderson mode. Flicks it in there sideways the whole way round. It's like a drift show. This is ridiculous from Erickson trying to find a way past Val. Erickson was so quick in the early practice runs on Friday. Now looks to the inside of Val out of the final corner. Will he have the traction to get alongside? No, at the moment he doesn't. To watch her in setting it up now, he uses the curve. Now he goes outside, inside. It's going to put him out really wide as they come into the hairpin. He'll flick the car in early and hope to get Val on the exit. There goes Val wide. Oliver Erickson up the inside line. It's a carbon copy of the Great thing we saw earlier on today in cross car. Erickson gets it done. Comes down that back straight. That's a fantastic piece of race car. Val surely going to go Joker. No choice. That's the right decision as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. You would lose too much by breaking and chucking it in. 
and get it back. Go now for the laps, you know, see if you can get the overlap back again the other way. Pops out behind his teammate, Evian, who has been into the Joker so far, lost a bit of time there, tumbling down the order now from early on. Kevin Erickson on the back of this pack, he has Joker. Kevin on a massive charge, trying to salvage more points than last position here in his quest to become 2023 champion. And that fight is with this race leader, Johan Christophsen, who is setting the fastest laps of this race, lap after lap now. Him and, uh, look at him and his teammate, baby. 40.120 and 40.121. They are one thousandth of a second apart in terms of their ultimate lap pace. Still, Oliver Eriksson is uh, roasting the Cooper tyres with a fantastic trip show in the background. 3.3 back. I don't think they they won't drop him back to help Kevin out in terms of points. It's, I, I really don't, don't think they will. Well, I don't know. Because I think they might. I think Oliver might do that himself because at the moment he's not going to be on the podium, is he? I think Evian might get him. I think he's gone. Where is Evian gone? Yeah, where's Evian? Where is Evian? Ev Evian's disappeared. Oh, he's dropped the down the order. Really. So this is now with Val. He's eight seconds down. Oh, Oliver is going to have enough to be on the podium. Here we go then. Christopherson into the joke lap. His teammate Baby comes in behind. Christopherson silky smooth. Baby with the rally style. Just a little flick in and a little flick out. The two polos come out over the crest into P1 and P2. Ericsson in in the background comes out in third as well. So Oliver Ericsson going to get P3. DNF for Evans just popped up. He's gone from this race. Through the left hander comes Johan Christopherson. He missed out in Finland, but it's an emphatic clean sweep weekend here in Grenland for the five time world champion. His teammate 1 2. Perfect result for KMS. Oli Eriksson gets P3. Championship front runner Kevin Eriksson is fifth behind Jetsval. That's a fantastic performance team. P4 in the pro final. And here is another look at the start. Look at that. Oli jumps and then reacts and goes back on the break. Kevin then goes. I don't think he's seen Oliver. I think he's just stalled. Stunning performance from KMS this weekend. They've been exceptional. Christofsson hasn't been headed after those early practice sessions. That was a massive send. From Ollie Erickson, it was I like never going to gonna work. I love it, but it was never going to work with all that loose gravel. You've got to try. Look at it from that angle. Absolutely pitched it in. I love it. I, lo I, I love, love it. I love this shot as well, where you've got all the cars at different angles in the opening uh, couple of corners. And again, Oliver sends the car in. Uh, this was epic. The long, long corner. It and then the this is a setup, brilliant move to get up the inside so what we saw of Val. Cross car earlier. Do you remember from from that very last corner? You just see him. A little bit curb here. A little bit curb there. Full width. Full width. Had to joke. He even got a little nudge from the rear of uh, the real estate on uh, Ollie Ericsson's Honda Civic. We yeah. barely talked about this man, didn't we? Stunning performance again for Jan Christophsen. What a masterclass. Supercars have all pulled him right next to us because it's podium time. We're going to see if we can have a chat with Jan Christophsen. I don't know if we can grab him out of the car or not. Kevin Erickson was all over the back of Jens Val in the final corner as well, but just couldn't quite get ahead. Christofferson wins round seven of Rally X 2023. Super close between him and Ola Christian Baby, a thousandth of a second in it between their fastest laps. 40.120 and 40.121. Incredible performance by them. They said they've been working on the car. And it does look very good indeed. The Civics will be back next weekend to do battle at Hollius. Of course, everybody wants to win at Hollius, and we can't wait to go there. How, what a great weekend. I've never been here before. Unusually, you've never been here before as well. What a brilliant venue. Yeah, has been here at the championship points. Oh. Johan Christofsson now leads. I believe this is on drop scores. Johan Christofsson leads by two points from Kevin Eriksson. Yuri Belevsky, having not made the final here, is uh, pretty much out of it. It's going to be some battle, isn't it? And uh, yeah, we've had an amazing circuit this weekend, and Julius, as you correctly say, everybody loves, and that is going to be the place to have a championship showdown. Yeah, it is. Christofferson versus Ericsson for the Rally X title. Here he is. Here he is. There, little, there we are. Johan Christofferson joins us in the commentary box. What a mate. Yeah. Happy to be here, finally. <laughs> <laughs> he saw us early. He said, oh, here we've been out talking to drivers. Who? Because you haven't been talking to me. So uh, <laughs> we're just leaving you to it. You know, I'd like to give you a bit of space. We figured you get enough air time. Um, mate, well done. That was, that was, um, you, you, and, uh, you and your teammate, 40 point, what was it, 120 or something, and then and then 40.121. You were a thousandth apart on your laptop. Was yeah, you were. <laughs> oh, yes. Because <laughs> Lucas has been faster than me all weekend. <laughs> so, well, luckily, I, I finally got him. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, he, he was really fast this weekend. Oli Kirsten did a very good job. And uh, yeah, also the team has done a great job. We, we, We've been fighting uh, through the weekend, and uh, yeah, this car that I haven't driven as much as, as the car Uli Christian drives, 
always gives me a little bit bigger challenge when uh, the track conditions are changing. Right. And new track to me, changing conditions every single outing. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. So I uh, was really, really tricky. But I, I got the car into the window and uh, yeah, got some some new tires for semi final and final and then. Starts has been good as well. So. <laughs> Mate, you guys have been working a bit on the car, haven't you? I know. So that's made a difference. It's, it's a bit more comfortable. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, now in the final, the car the car was comfortable and the, and the car was, was really, really good to drive. Um, so I really pushed absolutely everything I had. And, and, and I wanted to make a gap on Uli Christian, but... Uh, I was, with you, I, was, I was watching the mirrors, and it was exactly <laughs> the same every lap. So. Let's say 1,000. You, you, yeah. you got him. You yeah. got him. And we, me and Howard just saying, it's our first time here. We think this place is awesome. What do you think? Yeah, it's really cool. I, I really like the track. Uh, quite, quite challenging. Also very fast. Uh, and the jump going into the kind of velodrome after turn two is perfectly manageable to go flat, but you will end up wide. Yeah, uh, so it's it's just it's in the perfect place to be a big challenge. It's absolutely isn't it? perfect. It's it, great. It's as, it? And Ole Kirsten has been smashing it there through the weekend. So in the final, I was like, now I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> and if I'm wide, I'm wide. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Now I go for it. If he can take it flat, I can take it flat. The rest of the yeah. team are in behind here. We can see uh, Ole Christian as well. They're, they're starting to gather around the podium next to us. We think looking at the standings with drop scores, you lead by two points going to Holius. Kevin was P5 there. He stalled on the line. Uh, uh, it's not two points. You think it's not two? What do you think? Because it is? you drop a whole weekend, right? No, you can pick two, can't you? From or you're dropping a whole weekend. You're dropping Kovala, but we think no, uh, you drop a whole weekend. Uh, yeah, no, you do. a whole weekend. Uh, I forget. There's been uh, lots of chat find, the, find the message from Kevin. Kevin message us. Ah, uh, so he's the one choosing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably two events. Then. Yeah, it's, it's two. It's one one drop round for all the support categories, but it's two for supercar. But I don't know if you have to drop a whole double header weekend, or if you can just pick any two results. Mm. How what you got? He's searching for it. Two drop rounds from any of the first six. Right, yeah, so it's not a dropped weekend. So you've got to drop Kovala, obviously, because you weren't there. Kevin will be dropping his two worst. So we think it's well. Okay, the TV graphics says two. So whoever did that, if you're wrong, it's your fault. So he's leading them. No, you lead by two, he says. We say. Our graphic says. Who says? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? You think that's right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I look, I'll tell you what. Nobody cares. Are you looking forward to a championship fight in exactly. Hollywood? So, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, so yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. I, you go there and, and we try to win, so uh, let's see how it goes. But uh, I mean, I can, not those. The, I want to have the one you didn't like. The salty fish? Yes. No. They're in the truck, they're horrible. No, they're nice. Really? Yeah. You should have tried Smash. Yeah. We, are. we have some Smash. Yeah. yeah. You try them? Uh, not yet. No, but they are. I'm really taking nice. them home, they're Smash. No, you're not. Because we're going to open it <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy another one. That's how we try go. it. You have to try it. I'll take a double one. Go on, let's go. You know what you should do? You should actually have this mixed with some more stuff at the same time. Mm. Some salty. It's nice, huh? Mm. 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 I've done the full on each on there then. And I don't care because it was really good. It's not so bad, yeah. They're great. Yeah. Okay. To be Norwegian, they are. Yeah. They're I'm Norwegian, are they? Yes. Sweet, salty and crispy. It's Very a win It's a win from me, unlike salty fish. What's the highlight of the weekend, guys? Uh, a couple of brilliant passes. So there was set up right from the bottom. Oliver did it here and one of the cross car drivers did it literally from the last corner. You know, when you just and use all the track to get, the, to get out, out, out. And then he was fully wide and up the inside into the hairpins was brilliant. And then watching you guys... We were watching practice. I love the, the crest. We spoke about this earlier. One of the, Somebody messaged in and was like, look, I wish the track had a jump. And we were saying that, that the crest is so perfectly placed to be absolutely critical to your speed into that corner that we, yeah. we love it. We I, love think, it. I think my highlight was turning up just before Q1 and seeing the commitment through turn one into two. And going, and yes. Having, being all crossed up and then still having to make the apex in two with the weight all the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. What's, your, what's yours? Uh, Beating Ola Christian Baby by... One thousandth of a second on the lap side. No, it's not a highlight anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, not enough. Joking, uh, joking aside. But uh, I think uh, going through uh, last corner T1, T2 uh, in Q2 yesterday, uh, Q3 yesterday, mm, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, when it was so much, when Evian got spun around. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was a bit lazy keeping the car to the left over the start finish line, which means you get a sharper T1. Yeah. And I had to then flick it a bit more sideways. And then I saw that there was so much gravel there. So then I was like, oh, I got to get it stopped. And then all it just, it just perfectly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Ole Christian's drone shot. Yeah, uh, that was mega. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's Because we were watching the onboard and Ole Christian was looking there. And I said, oh, look, the drone, you, you almost collect the drone. Yeah. And then I said, yeah, you're right. And then, yeah. 
one hour later, the the TV crew texted with Christian and said that you have to come and collect the the video. Yeah, I've seen it. It's a, it's a reel on Instagram with uh, with the series and with OC, and it's the drone, but using the onboard audio. Yes, yeah. and it just sounds. Yeah. It's just it's, and also, it's good. If you look at it, you see that uh, the video videographer has done it. So when the drone is further away, the sound is. Really? <laughs> Lower? <laughs> so it's been, it's, that's very good, isn't it? That's very good. Kind of detail that the videographer is looking at. Probably. Yeah, it's, I love Not the it. drivers, maybe. I, I love the fact he, know, he would notice, <laughs> wouldn't he? Mate, congratulations. Thank well you done. Very much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Holly. You're in going the, home uh, in between? Yeah, we're going home just a couple yeah, of days. staying out of EU. Huh? Staying. <laughs> I didn't vote for that. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly didn't vote for the queue at Stockholm Airport. Um, Oslo, Oslo's a little bit better. Much better. Um, we're flying to Oslo again next weekend. What up, mate? We'll let you get to the podium. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. See you in the week. Yeah, Cheers, mate. take care, mate. Brilliant. There we go. Johan Christofferson, five-time world champion. You can't say no to him opening the smash. If he wants to open the smash, he can open the smash, can't he? Smashed it. Mmm. Tasty. Right. <sighs> I thought this weekend was going to be easier because it's not a double header and we had more than three minutes off air. But I say that that show earlier on today, an hour of live filling with not really a lot to do, was was hard work, but some of the most fun I've had on air on this series. How it's been another brilliant weekend. Thank yep. you so much, mate. Well done. I can't believe it's over next week. No, oh, I know. Yeah, it's been it's the cadence of the series. All the championships this year is a bit strange. We had three events, then a big gap. Now two events, and we're done. But I do hope you will join us next weekend in Hollius for the championship finale. So we're going to be crowning five champions. Uh, you can get your tickets. Have a look there, rallyx.se. If you've not been to Hollius before, get, get yourself over there because it's not the magic weekend. There'll be a little bit more time to and space to move around between the different series. And obviously, we've got Swedish championship, Swedish well. championship there as well. So there'll be breaks as well in between. It's not too late. Book a ticket. Get on a plane. I don't care if you live in America. It's, it's, I go to America. Come to Hollius. I expect to see some of you there next weekend. For those of you that can't make it, I hope you join us here. Thank you very much indeed to the entire TV team, everybody who stood out in the rain yesterday. Absolutely. All good for you, mate? Yeah, great. Loved Mega. it. Absolutely loved it. Right. We're on the road to Oslo Airport. A couple of days at home. We'll be back at it again on Friday. Take care, guys. We'll see you then.